Okay, all praises to the Lord. So tonight's topic is called Understanding Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Let's open up with the book of Psalms chapter 119, verse 18. Come on. Psalms chapter 119, verse 18. Read. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. So this is our for the King David praying. He says, Father, open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Because we are praying for the Lord to open our spiritual eyes that we may understand what this Bible is saying. You understand the things that are hidden? We are praying to the Lord that the Lord open our spiritual eyes that we may understand. Get that in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. Ephesians 1, verse 18. Let's read that. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. Mm -hmm. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You see that? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened. That's the same thing that King David said. That the eyes of our understanding must be enlightened. Go ahead. That ye may know what is the hope of his calling. Mm -hmm. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You see that thing? Our, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened that we may know what is the riches of the door of his inheritance in the saints. Get that in Romans 11, verse 33. The riches of his inheritance. First and foremost, read that. Romans 11, verse 33. Come on. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. You see that thing is as for the depth of the riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of God. That's the riches. That's the first and foremost riches that the Lord is talking about. You understand? Before we can get our wealth back, we must get, we must first get our wealth of knowledge back. Wisdom, knowledge, and understand. That's what the Lord is showing us right there. Now we're gonna go into the book of Galatians, okay? Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, because this right here, our people are stumbling upon this. And guess what? Even in Israel, there's stumblings in this. So we need to go over it so we can understand once and foremost what it means. Okay, give me Galatians 2 verse 4. Galatians chapter 2 verse 4. Read that. Galatians chapter 2 verse 4. Mm -hmm. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus. Right. That they might bring us into bondage. You see that thing? So now the Apostle Paul is explaining, he listen, because of false brethren unaware, you understand, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus. These false brethren, we're going to find out in a minute who they are. You understand? They wanted to bring the, the followers of Christ, they wanted to bring the congregation during the time of, um, during the, time of, of the Acts of the Apostles, you had false brethren that wanted to take the people back to the law of animal sacrifice. That's the bondage he's talking about here. You understand? Give me Galatians 5 and 1 so we understand the bondage, what he's talking about. Come on. Galatians chapter 5 is 1. Mm -hmm. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Mm -hmm. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. He says, be not entangled be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage because the yoke of bondage is the law of animal sacrifice, the sacrificial law. So what we read in here, Christ, he freed us from the law of animal sacrifice that we no longer supposed to sacrifice no more. You understand? But there were false brethren that were going to different churches doing what? Bewitching the people, privily. You understand? They feigned themselves just men, but they were not about the Bible. They were not about keeping the commandments. They were not about following Christ. They did not want to believe. They didn't believe on Christ. But they made it seem like they did. You understand? And they came into the congregation to do what? To deceive the hearts of the sinners. Give me that in uh, Acts chapter 15 verse 1. Acts 15 and verse 1. Let's read that. Acts chapter 15 verse 1. Come on. And certain men which came down from Judea, taught the brethren, you and said, that? Hold on, a certain man, which came down from Judea. Remember, during the time of the Acts of the Apostles, during the time of Christ, 
The majority of the tribes of the in Jerusalem was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. So this is the southern kingdom here. Read again. Acts chapter 15, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren. Meaning, south, this is the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom of Israel, you understand? The scribes, the Pharisees, the chief priests, okay? Go ahead. And said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. You see what they was pushing? False brethren came in unawares to do what? To spy out our liberty that they might take us back to the law of animal sacrifice. Because that's what they're going over here. When it says, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses. The manner of Moses is the law of animal sacrifice. Because when, when circumcision was, was done, guess what followed after? The sacrificial law. We had to do sacrifices after what? After every circumcision that was performed on the eighth day. Okay? So these certain men, which came from Judea, watch what the Bible says. Go to the book of Titus. Okay, give me Titus 1. Titus chapter 1 and verse 10. Watch this. Titus chapter 1 verse 10. Read. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and mm -hmm. deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. You see that? That's what the Apostle Paul is explaining here to our forefather Titus. Is a listen, there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, southern kingdom. This is the certain men that we read about in the book of Acts that came down from Judea. Go ahead. Whose mouths must be stopped. You see that? They must be stopped. Their mouth must be stopped because they were deceiving the people. Okay, go ahead. Who subverts whole houses. Mm-hmm. Teaching things which they ought not. Come on. For filthy lucre's sake. You see that thing? Guess what? They, they didn't care about the people. They only cared about the apostles. It says for filthy lucre's sake. Why? Because what came with the sacrifice, what, what came with the law of animal sacrifice was what? The sacrifices that we had to bring. You understand? And they ate of those sacrifices that we had to bring. That's why they want to say, they, they, they were pushing, they teaching the people to return back to the law of Moses, which is what? The law of animal sacrifice, particularly. You understand? That's why it says, for filthy lucre's sake. Go ahead. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, mm -hmm. the Christians are always lies, mm -hmm. evil beasts, slow bellies. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, even one of them said, the Christians are always liars. They lie. Evil beasts, they are evil as hell. And slow bellies, meaning they are dumb as hell. Go ahead. This this witness is true. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply. He says, wherefore, we must do what? Wherefore, rebuke them sharply. He says, wherefore, rebuke them sharply. Meaning don't play with them. You understand? Because why? They are deceivers, vain talkers, whose mouths must be stopped. Go ahead. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. You see that thing? We must rebuke them sharply that they may be found in the faith. So go back to the book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 1. Again. Acts, chapter 15, verse 1. Read. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. That's what they were teaching. They were teaching garbage. They were saying, listen, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, the man of Moses is the law of animal sacrifice. He says you cannot be saved. You understand? Jump down to verse 5 so we see who they are. These certain men that crept in unaware. Read. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believe say. You see that? It says there are a certain of the sect of the Pharisees. So these are those certain men that crept in unaware. You understand? Which believe. But did they believe on Christ? No, they did not believe on Christ. But they think themselves just men. Hold that. Give me the book of Luke. Okay. Luke chapter 20. Luke 20 and verse 19. Watch this. Luke chapter 20 verse 19. Come on. And the chief priests and the scribes, the same hour, sought to lay hands on him. Meaning Christ. And they, right? and they feared the people. Mm hmm they perceived that he had spoken this parable against him. You see that thing? So they wanted to lay hands on Christ, 
but they were afraid of the people. You understand? Because Christ had a lot of followers, okay? Right? And they watched him. They did what? And, and they watched him. And they watched him. They was watching Christ when he was teaching. They were following him around. They had spies spying on what he was doing, what he was teaching. If there's many people following and believing on what he taught. Right? And sent forth spies. You see that? They sent forth spies. The same way the scribes and Pharisees sent forth spies after Christ. And the disciples, they were doing the same thing when Christ left, when the disciples took over and they were teaching the gospel. During the time of the Acts of the Apostles, the same thing was going on. They sent forth spies. You understand? Men are the uh, wicked men that crept in unawares, that came privily to spy out our liberty. The same thing happened back then, so it is today. Go ahead. And sent forth spies, which should train themselves just men. You see that thing? We should fame themselves just men. Meaning they were not just men, but they pretended to be just men. They didn't believe on Christ, neither did they believe what Christ taught or what the apostles taught. You understand? But they fame themselves just men. They were faking the fun. That's what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. That they might take hold of his words. Mm -hmm. That so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. You see that so he says that they may take hold of his words. Meaning, try to use his words against what? Because the reason why they do that is because what our forefathers, the apostles, Christ, they stayed in the Bible. So we must do the same thing. Stay in the book. You understand? So that they don't take hold of our words and use them against us. As it is written, that's how we're commanded to teach. So go back. Acts chapter 15, read verse 5 again. Acts chapter 15, verse 5. Read. But they rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed saying. So they didn't believe, but they saved themselves just men. Go ahead. Saying that it was needful to circumcise them mm -hmm. and to command them to keep the law of Moses. You see what he's saying? So these scribes and Pharisees, it says what? They saved themselves just men, but you see what they were saying? He's saying that it was needful to circumcise to, and to command them to keep the law of Moses, meaning take them back to the law of animal sacrifice. That's what they were doing. They were taking the people back to the law of Moses, which is the law of animal sacrifice, after what Christ did. They were still pushing that. Why? Because it was about the sacrifices that the people brought. You understand? Read verse, read, uh, read verse 10 now. Watch this. Acts chapter 15, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God? to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. You see what they are saying? It says, why, why are you changing the law to put a yoke on the neck of the disciples? What was the yoke? The yoke of bondage, what is that? The law of animal sacrifice. That's what they are talking about. To put the yoke upon the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. Because we couldn't bear that. You understand? He didn't make us perfect. That was the issue. He didn't make us perfect. Watch this. Get the book of Galatians 3 verse 1. You understand? Because our people in the church of Galatia, they were bewitched. And all the churches of Galatia, our people were bewitched up in there. Why? Watch this. Read it. Galatians 3 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Oh foolish Galatians, who had bewitched you? You see that? that he Read. Who had bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth. Mm -hmm. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. You see what he said? He said, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? The truth that Christ taught, the truth that the apostles taught, who has bewitched you that now you no longer believe the truth? Read verse 3. Watch this. Verse 3. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? You see what he's asking? Are you so dumb and stupid as hell? Having begun in the spirit, meaning you began, you, you learned about Christ. You learned what Christ did, and Christ was crucified among you. You know what, he, what was his purpose to come upon this earth, to die for the 12 tribes of Israel, to usher, to usher in the new covenant. Because he was the mediator of the New Testament. He says, are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, meaning under in Christ? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? 
The flesh goes into what? The law of animal sacrifice. So he's asking them the question. Watch this. Give me the book of Philippians. Okay? Give me Philippians 3. Because the same thing the Apostle Paul, he addressed the church that was purified. Okay? Philippians 3. Philippians chapter 3. Um, read verse 3. Philippians chapter 3 verse 3. Mm -hmm. For we are the circumcision mm -hmm. which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. You see what he's saying? He says, for we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus. Why? Because the Lord sent Christ his son down to die for us so that we can what? We can be adopted from the old covenant to the new covenant. Okay? He says, and have no confidence in the flesh. What is that? The law of animal sacrifice. The sacrificial law. He says, we have no confidence in the law of animal sacrifice. Why? Because Christ died, so he can abolish that. You understand? That's what he's saying to them. Why? Because that they were bewitched. You understand? They were bewitched by these false brethren that came in unawares to confuse the brethren. You understand? So that's why we must protect the purity of the doctrine at all costs. You understand? Negroes going off, you are going to be rebuked sharply. Why? Because we must protect the flock, of course. Now, what I'm showing you is back then, this was the problem. The scribes and Pharisees were compelling people to return back to the law of animal sacrifice. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Colossians, Colossians 2. Colossians 2, verse 16. Because this is what the Apostle Paul had to, he had to address this thing once again. Colossians, Colossians 2, read verse 16. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. So now the Apostle Paul is telling the church that was in Colossians, listen, let no man therefore judge you in meat. Meaning meat offerings, go there, get that in Ezekiel 45, 17. Let no man therefore judge you in the meat offering. You understand? Meaning, let no man compel you to bring the sacrifices anymore. That's what he was telling them. Because that's what the scribes and Pharisees were pushing. You understand? Confusing the brethren. Read that in Ezekiel 45, 17. Ezekiel chapter 45, 17. Go ahead. And it shall be the prince's part. To mm -hmm. give burnt offerings. The princes is talk about the captain. You understand? The high-ranking officers of Israel. It says it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings. Go ahead. And meat offerings. And meat offerings. So what we what is going over here is the apostle Paul is quoting Ezekiel because the princes, which was the captain, that's what they would do. They would bring burnt offerings. You understand what it was their turn. You understand? Meat offerings. Come on. And drink offerings mm -hmm. in the feasts and in the new moons and in the Sabbaths, in all solemnities of the house of Israel. You see that? Each in, all, in all solemnities of the house of Israel, meaning the high holy days that we would keep and all that, that's what we would that's what the princes would do. Okay, come on. He shall prepare the sin offering mm -hmm. and the meat offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings. To make, re to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. You see that? So these, the meat, the, the meat, the drink, the meat offerings, the drink offerings, the bank offerings and all that, there was to, for the purpose of it was what? To make reconciliation for the house of Israel. You understand? So, because we were, that's, because we were still under the law of animal sacrifice. So for us to be reconciled back to the Father, guess how we would do it? We would sacrifice. You understand? Watch this. There's another one in Numbers. Well, let me see that. Let me see this thing. There's, there's one in Numbers that actually goes into that. Let me see if I can get it quick. It's not in my notes. But I know it is. Yes. Yes. Get that in Numbers 7. Watch this. Numbers chapter 7, verse 1. Okay. Numbers chapter 7, verse 1. Come on. And it came to pass on the day that Moses had fully set up the tabernacle and had anointed it and sanctified mm -hmm. it and all the instruments thereof, both the altar really? and all the vessels thereof 
and had anointed them and sanctified them. Great. That the princes of Israel, heads of the house of their fathers, who were the princes of the tribes, and were and were over them that were numbered, offered. What did they do? Offered. They offered. What did they offer? Burnt offering, meat offering, drink offering. Do you understand? That's what the princes would do. You understand? After Moses had anointed them and sanctified them. Jump down to verse 4. You know what? Read verse 3. Read verse 3. Keep going. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. And they brought their prince offering, and they brought their offering before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Six covered wagons and twelve oxen. A wagon for two of the princes and for each one an ox. Mm -hmm. And they brought them before the tabernacle. You see that he's going into the details of what was offered during that time. Read verse 4. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, mm -hmm. Take it of them, that they, may, that they may be to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. And thou shalt give them unto the Levites, to every man according to his service. Jump down to verse 10. Watch this. Verse 10. And the princes offered for dedicating for dedicating of the altar in the day that it was anointed. Even the princes offered their offering before the altar. You see that even the princes offered their offering before the altar. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, they shall offer their offering, each prince on his day, for the dedicating of the altar. Come on, verse 12, watch this. And he that offered his offering the first day was Nashon, the son of Aminadab, of the tribe of Judah. You see that? Jump down to verse 18. Come on. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. On the second day, Nathaniel, the son of Zua, prince of Issachar, did offer. Jump down to verse 24. Now you've got Judah, you've got Issachar. Come on, verse 24. On the third day, Eliab, the son of Helon, prince of the children of Zebulon, did offer. Verse 18 now. Come on. On the fourth day, Eliza, the son of Shadur. the son of the son of Shadur, prince of the children of Reuben, did offer. Verse thirty-six. Come on. On the fifth day, Shalumiel, the son of Zerusha, Zerusha died. Zerusha died. Come on. The son of Zerusha died. Prince of the children of Simeon did offer. Verse twenty. Verse forty-two. Now, come on. On the sixth day, Eliasaph, the son of Deuel, prince of the children of Gad, offered. Verse 48. On the seventh day, Elishama, the son of Amihud, prince of the children of Ephraim, offered. Verse 54. On the eighth day, offered Gamaliel, the son of Pedazer, the son of Pedazer, prince of the children of Manasseh. Verse 60. On the ninth day, Abidan, the son of Gideoni, prince of the children of Benjamin, offered. Verse 66. On the tenth day, Ahiezer, the son of Amishadai, prince of the children of Dan, offered. Verse 72. On the eleventh day, Pagiel, the son of Okran, prince of the children of Asher, offered. Verse 78. On the twelfth day, Ahira, the son of Inan, prince of the children of Naphtali, offered. Verse 84. This was the dedication of the altar in the day when it was anointed by the princes of Israel. By the what? By the princes of Israel. Read that again, verse 84, so we understand what's going on. Come on. Numbers of the 7, verse 84. Mm -hmm. This was the dedication of the altar in the day when it was anointed by the princes of Israel. You see that? By the princes of Israel. By the princes of Israel. Come on. Twelve charges of silver, twelve silver bowls, twelve spoons of gold. So now what we're reading here is what? Is what we just read in Ezekiel 45 and 17. What the Apostle Paul was quoting. Go back to Ezekiel now. Ezekiel 45 and 17. Again. Ezekiel chapter 45 verse 17. Uh -huh. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings 
in the feasts and in the new moons and in the Sabbaths, in all solemnities of the house of Israel. He shall prepare the sin offering and the meat offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. You see that to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. So what we're reading here is part of the law of sacrifice. So go back to Colossians now, chapter 2, verse 16. You see, the apostle Paul was a master teacher. You understand? He was following after the footsteps of our Lord and Savior, the Christ. Read that, Colossians 2, verse 16. Come on. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Why? Because that was the job of the princes that they would do to dedicate the temple to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. The princes would do that. The captains of the tribe, that's what they would do. So what the Apostle Paul is explaining here is what Ezekiel was explaining, what Moses explained in Numbers. You understand? Why? Go ahead. Watch the next verse, verse 17. Which are a shadow of things to come. Mm -hmm. But the body is of Christ. You see that? So these sacrifices, the meat, the drink, the, the meat, the drink, the burnt offerings and all that, it was what? It was a shadow for things of things to come. But the body is of Christ because Christ was the one that was going to do away with the law of animal sacrifice when he sacrificed himself for the 12 tribes of Israel. Get that in Ephesians 5, verse 1 and 2. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Right. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. You see that? So that's what Christ did. Christ did away we abolished the law of animal sacrifice. He didn't abolish the whole law, just the law of animal sacrifice. That's what we read here. Read again verse 2. Come on. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2. Mm -hmm. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. You see that thing? That's what the Apostle Paul was explaining. So now he was, what was he doing? He was making sure that the churches are not bewitched. Like you understand? Like the church of Galatia, the, all the churches of Galatia, that they are not bewitched. So back then you have the scribes and Pharisees that was confusing our people in the congregation. Guess who are these? The modern day scribes and Pharisees, who are they are today? The Christian pastors. These black Christian pastors, they are the modern day scribes and Pharisees. And guess what they teach? They teach traditions of men. You understand? They teach traditions of men to our people. They are confusing our people. Watch this. Give me the book of Galatians 1, okay? Galatians chapter 1, because you've got these wicked Christian pastors who don't want to teach the Bible as it is written. You understand? They are doing the same thing as the scribes and Pharisees was doing back then. The scribes and Pharisees back then, what were they doing? They were pushing the people back to the law of animal sacrifice. Today, the Christian pastors, what are they doing? They are rocking our people to sleep with the traditions of men. Men made traditions which are not biblical, but they are using the Bible as a small finger. Get Galatians 1, Galatians chapter 1, read verse 6, okay, read. Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. Mm -hmm. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. You see that thing? The apostle Paul was talking to the church of Galatians. Galatians, and listen, I marvel that you are so soon removed. Removed from what? Removed from the grace, you understand, of Christ unto another gospel. You understand? Because guess what? They were pushing another gospel back then to say, go back to the law of animal sacrifice. Except you be circumcised after the man of Moses, you cannot be saved. Likewise, today, the Christian pastors, they are pushing what? The doctrines of Christianity. That doctrine of devil. That's what they are pushing. Another gospel. You understand? Read. Which is not another. You see that? Which is not another. Why? Because they are using the Bible as a supposed to be pushing the letters of Paul, which they don't understand. The letters of Paul are, are written hard to be understood. 
but they are pushing that to confuse our people in the churches today, in the Christian church. Go ahead. But there be some that trouble you mm -hmm. and would pervert the gospel of Christ. That's your creflo, dollar, your GDJ, you understand? Who I need a buy them, who pass the case, who go shiri, who borrow. They are the ones that are troubling us because they are perverting the true gospel of the Messiah. Ha! Huh? Get that in 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3. You understand? Because that's what they're doing. They are pushing Christianity to our people. And Christianity is a man-made tradition. It's a man-made doctrine. You understand? Read. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Mm -hmm. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent without Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. You see what he's telling them? The Apostle Paul is letting them know, listen, don't be deceived by the serpent or beguiled by the serpent the same way our foremother Eve was. You understand? Don't be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Because in Christ was simple. The, in Christ is simple. There's no need for us to bring those sacrifices that we used to bring back then. But what they were doing, what were they doing? They were, they were corrupting the people with saying, you must go back to the law of animal sacrifice. Likewise today, your modern day scribes and Pharisees, the Christian pastors, your Bushiri, your Mboro, who pastor Mukuba and all that, who pastor Chris, you understand? Who pastor Hadebe, who pastor Mukuke. They are taking our people, they are doing what? They are correcting our people with Christianity. Understand that? Go ahead. For if he, if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, mm -hmm. or if he receive another spirit, which we have not received, or another gospel, which he have not accepted, he might well bear with him. You see what the Apostle Paul is saying? He says, for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, which man came to preach another Jesus in these last days? The so-called white man. You understand? In the 1400s, they changed the pictures, the, 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 the true images of Christ from a black man to a white man. You understand? They gave the life of Christ, the physical Messiah, they gave his life to who? Caesar Borgia, the second son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome, who was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. So now what we're reading here says, for if he that cometh preach another Jesus, whom we have not preached, the apostles never taught a white Jesus with blue eyes, with pink skin and yellow hair. They never taught that. You understand? And guess what? The Christian pastors, they are doing the same thing. These black pastors, they are pushing the same garbage to our people. Go ahead. It says what? And if you receive another what? Oh, if you receive another spirit. If you receive another spirit. What another spirit? Because listen, this another Jesus comes with another spirit. What spirit is that? The laws of God are done away with. We have license to sin now. We are under grace. We can do whatever the hell we want. That's what the Christian pastors are teaching. You understand? That's what comes with white Jesus. Go ahead. Or if he receive another spirit, which he have not received, mm -hmm. or another gospel, another which what? he have not accepted, or another gospel, or another gospel, or another gospel. The another gospel is what? Christianity. Christianity is another God. That's what the Apostle Paul says. Which is not another. Why? Because they are using the Bible as a small screen to convince us, to confuse our people, making them think that they are actually pushing the true gospel of Christ, which they are not. That's why he says, okay, which you have not received, or another gospel, either part again, or another what? Which you have not received, or another gospel, which uh -huh. you have not accepted. Come on. He might well bear with him. That's what we're doing now. We're bearing with him in the scriptures. We're bearing with him with the scriptures. We're shutting down all the evil imagination and wickedness they are pushing to our people. Why? Because they are coming with the Bible saying, guess what? We're pushing the true gospel of Christ. Come to our church and all of that. They are, it's just a money-making scheme. You understand? Now jump down to verse 13. Watch this. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. For such a false apostle. You see that? For such a false apostles, your TD snakes and all that, who crap lot dollars, they are false apostles. Go ahead. Deceitful workers. Mm -hmm. 
transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Because they are, but they are not the apostles of Christ. Watch this. Go ahead. And no matter, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Because Satan himself has transformed himself into an angel of light. Meaning what? He says he's got the, he's got wisdom. The same way he began our former day in the garden, that's the same thing today that the Christian pastors, they are moving in the same spirit, you understand, of this white man that they are learning from. They go to his seminary school, his cemetery school to learn how to put our people back to sleep. Okay, go ahead. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Whose end shall be according to their works. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, therefore, it is no great thing that it's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, because they make it seem like they are the ministers of righteousness. What these white preachers are, what, what these white pastors are teaching is what these black pastors are teaching. And where did these black pastors learn how to teach the way that they do from slavery? Because in slavery, they make sure that they take one of our people to regurgitate what the white pastor, what the white slave master was pushing on them, traumatize them with white supremacy. So guess what? They are doing the same thing today, but they are coming in the name of white Jesus, deceiving our people. You understand? Go back to Galatians 1. Galatians chapter 1. Read verse 6 again. The book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. Come on. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Unto another gospel, Christianity. You understand? Unto another gospel, which is what? Christianity. Go ahead. Which is not another. Mm -hmm. But there be some that travel and would pervert the gospel of Christ. You see that thing? It says, but which is not another because why? They come with the Bible. You understand? It says, but there be some that trouble you. Your Kreflo dollar, your Bushiri, your Mboro, they are troubling us. That's why now we're not going to keep quiet. We're going to keep going out there to blast them with the Bible. Why? Because they are perverting the gospel of Christ. You understand? They have not renounced the hidden works of corruption. They haven't done it. Read. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accused. Let him be accused. Let, me, let him be bewitched. Is it if any other God, if any other is but we or an, an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Meaning there must be a curse. So you Jiri Jane, your Kreflo Dollar, your Bushir Mumbor, Upasta Mukuba, Upasta Mukuge, they are bewitched, they are accursed. And now they are bewitching our people in the Christian church. That's what's going on today. Because why? They are pushing white supremacy and the dark doctrines of devil. You understand? That's what they're doing. Get that in Colossians 2 verse 8. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. So I'm showing you what was going on back then, which was they, they, were, they were putting a stumbling block before our people. And today, the modern day scribes and Pharisees, they are doing the same thing with Christianity, putting a stumbling block before our people using the letters of Paul to confuse our people, okay? Read that in Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8. Come on. Beware, lest any man spoil you through, through philosophy and vain deceit. Mm -hmm. After the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So Christianity is a philosophy of man, is a tradition of man, it, it works according to the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Christianity has nothing to do with the Bible. Christianity has nothing to do with the biblical Messiah. It's got absolutely nothing to do with it. Christianity is the tradition of the white man. Man made tradition. Okay? Get that in Matthew 15. Matthew chapter 15, start of verse 1. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, say, Read. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Stop right there. You see what they're asking? 
He says, why do your disciples cry? Why are they trans? Why are they breaking the traditions of the elders? Who are the elders? The scribes and Pharisees. You understand? Letting you know, the scribes and Pharisees, they were about man-made traditions. Okay, go ahead. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Come on. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? You see what he's asking now? He's asking the opposite. Why do you transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? So he's saying, listen, you choosing to break God's laws to follow your tradition. Why are you doing that? You understand? That's what he's asking them. So because guess what they were doing? They were following the traditions of what? Of Rome. Because they, they answered to Rome. Today, the modern day scribes and Pharisees, they answer to America, Europe. You understand? So they will push the traditions of America and Europe upon us. That's why now the whole earth is westernized, quote unquote. You understand? Why? Because they are pushing man made traditions. They are not pushing the commandments of God. And as long as they are pushing man made traditions, they are 100% transgressing God's law. That's what's going on. And that is the stumbling block that they put before our people. You understand? So now, watch this. Now give me, give me the book, give me the book of Galatians, okay? Give me Galatians, give me, give me, you know what? Give me Second Peter first. Second Peter 3 verse 15, about how the apostle Paul wrote things. Okay, Second Peter chapter 3 verse 15. Read that. Second book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 15. Read an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you. So the Apostle Peter is going to tell us how the Apostle Paul wrote things because the Lord put the Spirit upon him to write things that way. You understand? To fulfill prophecy. Go ahead. As also in all his epistles. His letters, come on. As also in all his epistles, in all his letters, read. Speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, mm -hmm. as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. You see what he's saying? Is that listen. The Apostle Paul wrote things had to be understood, okay? Which they that are unlearned and unstable, they wrestle with the understanding of the scripture. Why? Watch this. Hold that. Give me the book of Galatians 2, okay? Galatians chapter 2. I'm going to show you something this day. Galatians 2, start of verse 1. Watch this. The book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 1. Come on. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem, with Barnabas, and took Tyrus with me also. Read. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among, among the Gentiles. So now, hold on. So he went to Jerusalem with, with Tyrus and Barnabas. He says, when he got there, he communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. Because the apostle Paul was given the gospel to go and teach the uncircumcision of Israel. The scattered Israelites, you understand, who were living among the Gentiles, and they became Gentiles by the way they were conducting themselves among these Gentiles that they were scattered among. You understand? But watch this. When he came to Jerusalem, here's what he did. Go ahead. But private to them which of reputation, not by any means I should run. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Is that but privately? Yes, he said he communicated the gospel when he was in Jerusalem the gospel that he was preaching to the Gentiles, right? Now he says, but privately, so that means that there was, there was, there, there was a time where we went privately to who? Read that part again, but privately to what? But private to them which were of reputation. Meaning the elders, the leaders of Israel. He says, privately, I, but privately, the deep stuff, I went to teach the who? I went to speak to those of reputation in this church. You understand? Meaning the leaders of Israel. He wasn't just talking to Lexa Dukes on the street. The heavy stuff, he would do that. So when he's writing these letters, he's writing to the leaders of the churches. That's why he says, 
of them which were of reputation. Okay, go ahead. Lest by any means I should run, mm -hmm. or had ran, or had run in vain. Because if he's talking about his deep stuff, it's gonna it's gonna be as though he was what he would run in vain, meaning what he's doing it in vain. Why? Because they're not gonna understand what because they are unlearned and they were wrestle with the understanding of the scriptures. Why? Because they did not understand the old covenant. The apostle Paul did. He understood all that. You understand? That's why he needed to make sure that the people was not bewitched in all the churches that he was commissioned to go and teach the gospel to. You understand? That's what we read in right there. Now go back to 2 Peter chapter 3. Read verse 16 again. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 16. Come on. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Which 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 they that are unlearned and unstable rest. You see that they they also, are unlearned and unstable, they wrestle with the scriptures. Come on. As they do also the other scriptures. As they do also the other scriptures. The only other scriptures that was written was the old covenant. Go ahead. Unto their own destruction. Unto their own destruction. Okay. So now watch this. Give me the book of Galatians now, 3, verse 28. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 28. Mm -hmm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Right? There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So that scripture right there, our people are confused in the Christian church about that scripture. Read again. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 28. Mm -hmm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither Jew nor Greek. So the Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Galatia. Read again. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 28. Mm -hmm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Read. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For he are all one in Christ Jesus. So right there, guess what? Our people get confused by that. Because when it says neither Jew nor Greek, they say, you see, it doesn't matter what nationality you are. You understand? Because we are all one in Christ Jesus, meaning everybody can be saved. That's why the Christian pastors, that's what the Apostle Paul says, that they, but they be some that trouble you who should pervert the gospel of Christ. Because that's what this scripture is, that's not what he said. He's not saying it doesn't matter what your nationality is. He's not saying that. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Galatians. Who are the Galatians? Galatians 1 and 1. Galatians 1, verse 1. I might have to do part 2 of this. Lord's word. Read it. The book of Galatians, chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, but mm -hmm. by Jesus Christ, and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Meaning that after the, on the third day, he rose Christ from the dead. Go ahead. And all the brethren which are with me, unto the churches of Galatia. Read that again, verse 2. And what? And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. So now he's writing to the churches which are in Galatia. It is the plural, churches of Galatia. He says, he's greeting all the brethren which were with him, laboring in the truth, unto the churches of Galatia. You see that thing? The churches of Galatia. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 13. Acts 13, verse 4. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 4. Mm -hmm. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia. And from thence they sailed to Cyprus. So now, who the day? Is it so they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Who's the day? Just give me, give me the book of Acts 13, verse 1. Acts 13, verse 1. Let's see who is the day he's talking about. Watch this. The book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now they were in the church that was at the, that was at Antioch. Certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manian, 
which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetra, and Saul. So, and Saul. So, what you're seeing here is a certain prophet and teacher. These are Israelites. Is a certain prophet and teacher. You understand? It says what? Which, as, as also is mentioning uh, Saul. Saul, which is the apostle Paul. Jump down to verse 9. Acts chapter 13, verse 9. Watch this. So let's see who is Saul here. Who is Saul? Read that. The book of Acts chapter 13, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. You see that? He says, then Saul, who also is called Paul. This is the apostle Paul, because his name was Saul before he became the apostle Paul. You understand? So now, go back to Acts chapter 18, verse 4 now. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 4. These are Israelites, but I'm going to show you some more, because he says prophets and teachers. We know the prophets, according to Amos 2, verse 11, is the Israelites. But I'm going to show you another way to, to, to show you that these are Israelites here. Okay, Acts chapter 13, verse 4. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 13, verse 4. So Wait. they, be, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from mm -hmm. thence they sailed to Cyprus. They fell, it says they what? They departed and they went to Seleucia, and from thence they went to Cyprus. Watch this. Let me share my screen real quick. Let me show you Paul's journey. Okay, Paul's journey. I want you to read that verse again. You see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, read the verse again, verse 4. The book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 4. Mm -hmm. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia. And they from departed, thence, they... Is it, is it they departed unto Seleucia. Where was they? Read verse 1 again. The book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now they were in the church that was at Antioch. Stop right there. There was in the church that was at Antioch. That's what you see in there. That's Antioch right there. Go back to verse 4. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia. That's Seleucia right there. Go ahead. From thence, they sailed to Cyprus. They, they sailed to Cyprus. So Antioch, Seleucia, they are in their power of Syria. So they sailed, they went to Cyprus. Okay, go ahead. And when they were at Salamis. That's Salamis right there. This is Salamis. What you see? Go ahead. They preached the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews. In the what? In the synagogues of the Jews. In the synagogues of the Jews. So these are Israelites. They went to the synagogues of the Jews where the Jews were scattered in the cities of Greece. These are Greek islands. You understand? These are Greek islands. Okay. In the sin, they went to the synagogues of the Jews. Read. And they had also John to their minister. Come on, verse 6, read. Verse 6, and when they had gone through the isle unto Pavos. Pavos, that's what you see right there. They left Salamis, they went to Pavos, read. They found a certain saucer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bajesus. Bar -Jesus. Whose name was Bajesus. When they go to Pavos, they found a saucer, a false prophet, whose name was Bajesus. Jump down. Jump down to verse 16. You know what? Read verse 18. Read verse 18. We're going to read down. Watch this. I want you to pay attention to see what's going on here. Antioch, Seleucia, Cyprus, Salamis, Pavos. Let's go up. Go ahead. Verse 18. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 18. Read. Now when Paul and his company loosed from Pavos, they, left they came Pavos. to Peg. So they left Pavos. Where did they go? They came to Peg in Pamphylia. You see that they came to Pega in Pamphylia. That's Pamphylia right there. That's Pega. Okay, go ahead. And John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. Go ahead, verse 14. Come on. But when they departed from Pega, they came to Antioch they left in Pisidia. So they, hold on. They left Pega. Okay. They went where? They came to Antioch. In Pisidia. They came to, uh -huh, they came to Pan, uh, Antioch in Pisidia. That's Antioch right there. That's Pisidia. Go ahead. And went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. They went into the synagogue of the Jews, like we read in verse 5, 
and went into the synagogues on the Sabbath day and sat down. To do what? To teach God's law. So what you're seeing here, you've got Perga, which is in Pastoria. You've got Antioch in Pastoria. These are the cities of Galatia. You see that? Galatia. These are the, these are the cities of Galatia where the Apostle Paul was traveling. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 16. Watch this. Verse 16. You know what? Read verse 15. Read verse 15. The book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 15. Go ahead. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. You see what they are saying? He's letting you know these are Israelites. These are this is the, they went to the synagogues of the Jews and sat down. What did they do? They taught the law. They taught out of the law and out of the prophets. You understand? And now they are telling them, listen, ye men and brethren, again, brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Meaning, teach on. Okay, go ahead. Verse 16. Read. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hands, said, Men of Israel. Men of what? Men of Israel. You see what they were teaching? So what we read in Acts 13, 1, Acts 13, verse 1 down, these are Israelites. Where are they? In the churches of Galatia. You understand? The churches of Galatia. That's what you see here. Iconium, Lystra, Lyconia, Derby, Antioch, Pastidia, Pamphylia, Perga. The, these are all the cities of Galatia. Go ahead. And ye that fear God, give audience. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The God of this people of Israel chose mm. our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with an high arm brought he them out of it. He delivered us out of the land of Egypt. Okay. Now give me the book of Acts 18. Read verse 22 now. Acts 18 verse 22. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 18 verse 22. Pray. And when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. He did what? He went down to Antioch. He went down to Antioch. This is the Antioch he's talking about. Not this one. This one. Go ahead. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia. He did what? And, and went over all the country of Galatia. He went, he went all, he went over all the country of Galatia, all the country of Galatia to do what? And what? And Phrygia in order. And Phrygia, that's Phrygia right there. Or oh, you see, Phrygia is also part of Galatia. That's what they are there little, that's what the Lord is thinking of. Go ahead. Strengthening all the disciples. Mm -hmm. You see that? So he went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. That's what we read here. Now give me Acts chapter 14, verse 1. Acts 14, verse 1. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 14, verse 1. I'm showing you the Apostle Paul's journey when he was in the countries of Galatia. Remember it says, unto all the churches of Galatia. I'm showing you the churches of Galatia where the Apostle Paul traveled. And who was in those churches? Those churches were the synagogues of the Jews. The Jews were in those churches. So who are the Galatians? The Israelites. Okay, come on. The book of Acts chapter 14, verse 1. Wait. And it came to pass in Iconia. In what? And it came to pass in Iconia. In Iconium. Remember, Antioch. Okay. Now, Iconium, that Iconium right there, right? That they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. Mm -hmm. And so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. You see that thing? It says both the multi great multitude, both of the Jews, because the, 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 the brothers and sisters in Iconium, these were Israelites. Both of the Jews and also of the Greek belief. When it says Greek, it's talking about Israelites that grew up under Greek custom. It's not talking about Edomites. Jump down to verse 6. Watch this. 
Read. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. They were aware of it mm -hmm. and fled unto Lystra. Unto what? And fled unto Lystra. They, came, they left Iconium, they came to Lystra. Go ahead. And Devi. And Devi, that's Devi right there. Go ahead. Cities of Lyconia. Cities of Lyconia. That's Lyconia right there. Come on. And unto the region that lieth round about. Jump down to verse 19. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. And they came to the city Jews from Antioch and Iconia. Mm -hmm. You see that certain Jews from hold on, certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium. Okay, go ahead. Who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. They thought he was dead after they stoned him. Come on. How be it as the disciples stood round about, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed from. Barnabas to David. To David, they came here. Go ahead. And when they had preached the gospel to that city mm -hmm. and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch. You see that when they said, when they preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned, that city took about David. They returned back to what? To Lystra and Iconium and Antioch. This is the Apostle Paul's journey. You understand? Now give me Galatians 3 verse 28. Go back there. Um, I went to over all these pieces to show you who the Galatians are. You know what? Give me that in 1 Peter 1 and 1. How can I forget that? 1 Peter 1 and 1. Who the Galatians are. Okay? Read that. First book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, mm -hmm. Galatia, Cappadocia, you see that? Asia. Hold on. Read that part again. Read it slow. Come on. First book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus. Stop right there. To the strangers, to the strangers scattered. These strangers that are scattered, who are they? Hold this. Give me James 1 and 1. So we understand. Who are these strangers that are scattered? Okay, who are these scattered strangers in this land? Read the book of James, chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. You see that to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Now go back to where you were at. First Peter 1 and 1. First book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered to the pond. To the strangers mm -hmm. that are what? Scattered throughout pontus. Stop right there. To the strangers that are scattered. Who are these strangers? Israelites that were scattered in this land. In pontus. Go ahead. Galatia. Galatia. That's Galatia right there. And all the cities in Galatia. And all the churches which are in Galatia. Go ahead. Cappadocia. That's Cappadocia right there. These are Greek islands. Come on. Asia. They remember, these are, this is part of Asia Minor. Right? And Bithynia. And Bithynia. And Bithynia. Bithynia. So what I'm showing you is the Galatians are Israelites. Okay? Galatians are Israelites. Now, give me Galatians 3 verse 28. Verse 28, Galatians 3, verse 28. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 28. Mm -hmm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. 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 Watch this. Watch this. Give me, hmm. Why does it say there is neither Jew nor Greek? Hmm. Read again, verse 28. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 28. Mm -hmm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Read. Right? There is neither bond nor free. Mm -hmm. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So now you see that part right there. The key is for ye, because the Christians they go here to say, you see, it says, For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. 
Who is the ye that are all one in Christ Jesus? Jump up to verse 23. Let's see who is the ye that are all one. We've already established who the Galatians are. Galatians are Israelites. Okay? Now read verse 23. Just to put the nail in the coffin. Read it. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 23. Come on. But, but before faith came, we were kept under the law. Stop right there. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Remember in verse 28 it says, For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Read verse 23 again. Emphasize the right word here. Come on. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 23. Mm -hmm. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. So, but before faith came, faith is talking about Christ. Before Christ came, we were kept under the law. Before Christ came, we were kept under the law of animal sacrifice. That's what we went over at the beginning of the class. Go ahead. Shut up unto the faith. We were we shut up. up. Hold on. We were shut up unto the faith. Meaning what? We were still under the law of animal sacrifice. That's why I said shut up unto the faith. Because we were still under the law of animal sacrifice. Go ahead. Which should afterwards be revealed. Because Christ should afterwards be revealed. You understand? So we can be what? We can be ushered into the new covenant. You understand? Under Christ. That's what he's saying right there. He says, before faith came, which is Christ, we were kept under the law. Okay? Now, who was kept under the law before Christ came? Give me Psalms 50 verse 5. Psalms chapter 50 verse 5. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 5. Go ahead. Gather my saints together unto me. Mm -hmm. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. You see that? It says, gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Who is the saints that made a covenant with the Lord by sacrifice? Get that in Psalms 148, verse 14. Let's see who are the saints who made a covenant with the Lord by sacrifice. Okay, read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 148, verse 14. Read. He also exalted the horn of his people. Mm -hmm. The praise of all his saints. Come on. Even of the children of Israel. A people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. So the saints are the children of Israel. The Lord says we must praise him for that day. Because he chose us. You understand? He, we are the ones that he made a covenant with by sacrifice. Don't let a Christian confound you, okay? Give me that in Hebrews 8 verse 8. He made a covenant with us by sacrifice. Which covenant? The old covenant, okay? Hebrews 8 verse 8. Watch this. The book of Hebrews chapter 8 verse 8. Come on. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. And with the house of Judah. You see that thing he says, how it says, for finding fault with them. What was the fault he found with us? Because the law of animal sacrifice could not make us perfect. That was a yoke that neither our fathers or we were able to bear. That we read in Acts 15, verse 10. Jump up to verse 7 so we understand. Because he has said he found, he found fault with us. The covenant that he found fault with us is when we came out of Egypt with Moses, when we given the the, the a covenant of animal sacrifice. But read verse 7. Watch this. Because this is the key here. Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 7. Mm -hmm. For if that first covenant had been faultless. You see that? If the first covenant was faultless. What covenant? The covenant of animal sacrifice that we read about in Psalms 50, verse 5. Go ahead. Then should no place have been sought for the second. You see that thing? It is, there was not going to be a need for the second covenant if the first covenant was faultless, but it was with force. That's why a new covenant had to be ushered in. Next verse. Come on. For finding fault with it, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, mm -hmm. when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the mm -hmm. house of Judah. So the new covenant, just like, just like the old, is with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. All 12 tribes of Israel. Read verse 7 and 9 together. Watch this. Read it. The book of Hebrews chapter 8 verse 7. 
Mm -hmm. For if that first covenant had been fought, then should no place have been sought for the second. Verse 9, watch this. Verse 9, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. because they had continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. You see what he's saying? He says, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. What covenant was that? The covenant of animal sacrifice that was given to us by Moses because he was the mediator of the old covenant. We continued not in it because why? We, we, when we read Deuteronomy 28, that was the, 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 the punishment of breaking that covenant. Understand that? Okay? So that's why it says, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Okay? Now watch this. Give me Hebrews 9, verse 9. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 9. Come on. Which was a figure for the time then present. The old covenant, the old covenant was the figure for the time then present. Where did we just read this? Give me that in Colossians 2. Colossians 2, verse 17. Watch this. Because I know some of you might have forgotten already. Read it. Colossians 2, verse 17. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 17. Mm-hmm which are a shadow of things to come. You see that? So the law of animal sacrifice, which was the meat, the drink, the burnt offering in respect of these holy days and new moons and Sabbath days, guess what? Were a shadow of things to come. Go ahead, but the what? But the body is of Christ. But the body is of Christ. Go back, Hebrews 9, verse 9 again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 9. Mm-hmm. Which was a figure for the time then present. Which was a figure for the time then present. You understand? Go ahead. In which were offered both gifts and sacrifices. Mm -hmm. That could not make him that did the same perfect. You see that? So when it says which was the figure for the time then present, it was the shadow of things to come. In which were offered both gifts. That's the key right there. Offered both gifts and sacrifices. This is what the scribes and Pharisees were holding on to. Gifts and sacrifices. That could not make him that did the same perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Why? Because our conscience was still defiled even though we would sacrifice and even though we would observe the day of atonement, we still did evil in the sight of the law. You understand? Go ahead, verse 10. Verse 10. Which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. Until the time of Christ. Until the time when the new test, when the new covenant will be ushered in. That's what we read in Hebrews 8. You understand? It said it stood only in meat, that's the meat offering, and drink. Drink, which is drink offering, and diverse washing. Why? Because before you went, we, we went into the temple, you had to wash. The priest had to wash, to make sure that they wash themselves in the brazen altar and all that. You understand? If, to purify themselves before they could go into to perform the service of the priesthood. That's the diverse washing he's talking about. Okay? Now, jump down to the street. Okay, read that again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. You see that? So Christ is the mediator of the New Testament. Come on. That by means of death, mm -hmm. for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So now that part right there, when it says what? It says by means of death. Read that part again. Read verse 15 again in faith. Read it again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 15. Come on. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. So Christ is the mediator of the New Testament. Just like Moses was the mediator of the old with the law of animal sacrifice. Come on. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. You see that thing? It says, but by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. You see that thing? To redeem those that were under the first testament. Who was that? Israelites. 
That's what we read in Galatians. Don't lose the thought now. Go ahead. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. That promise of eternal inheritance is the promise of our forefather Abraham. You understand? And the seed of Abraham, which goes to Christ, which goes to us as well. Now read verse 18. Come on. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. We are born. Neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. You see that is that the first testament was not dedicated without blood. Why? Because we had to what? Jump up. Read verse 9 because he's saying the same thing. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 9, mm -hmm. which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices. Both gifts and what? And sacrifices. Both gifts and sacrifices. Both gifts and sacrifices. Sacrifices of those animals, those bullocks. You understand? Read verse 12. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. Neither by the blood of goats and calves. You see that? The sacrifices of the blood of, of bulls, the blood of goats and calves. Go ahead. But by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. Read the 13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth of the purifying of the flesh. So now you see, you see, you see the blood of bulls and goats. The blood of goats and calves. Jump down to verse 18. So we understand what the Apostle Paul was saying. Read verse 18 again. Verse 18. When mm -hmm. I'm born, Neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. You see that the blood of bulls and of goats, the blood of calves and of goats, it was not dedicated without blood. Blood had to be spilled. Next verse. Go ahead. For when Moses had spoken every precept unto all the people according to the law, mm -hmm. he took the blood of calves and of goats. You see that? With water. Whoa, 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 hold on. He did what? He took the blood of calves and water and of goats. You see that? He took the blood of calves and of goats. Come on. With water and scarlet wool. And he saw and sprinkled both the book and all the people. You see that? And sprinkled both the book and all the people. Go ahead. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 19. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people, according to the law, he took the blood of the calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people. You see that? That's what we read in Exodus 24. Come on. What did he say? Say, this is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. You see that? This is the blood of the testament. This is the blood of the Old Testament, you understand, which God had enjoined unto you. You understand? Go ahead, verse 21. What's this? Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. You see that thing? And all the vessels of the ministry. Why? Because remember, Moses was the mediator of the Old Covenant. And who did he make a covenant with? He made a covenant with all Israel. You understand? So now, when we go back, go back to Galatians 3, verse 23 again now. Okay? Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. Come on. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. You see that? Now we understand what law that was. The law of animal sacrifice. Okay? We were, we, the Israelites, were kept under the law of animal sacrifice. Go ahead. Shut up unto the faith which should mm -hmm. afterwards be revealed. You see that? We were shut up unto the faith. We were still under the law of animal sacrifice. You understand? We should afterwards be revealed. Meaning Christ should afterwards be revealed. You understand? To usher in the what? The new covenant. You understand? That's what we read in right there. Verse 24. Come on. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. What law? The law of animal sacrifice in the verse before. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Meaning what? A shadow of things to come. Read. That we might be justified by faith. That we might be justified in the faith that we have in the sacrifice that Christ would make. 
for the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? That's why it says the law was our schoolmaster. Which law was our schoolmaster? Get Hebrews 10 verse 1. Now. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Okay? Read that. Hebrews 10 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Mm -hmm. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the commas there unto perfect. You see what he's saying? The, it says the law. Which law? The law of animal sacrifice was a shadow of things to come. You understand? Hebrews 9 verse 11. Let's see who was the shadow of things to come. Who was that shadow of things? Who was the, who was the good things to come? The law was the shadow of good things to come. Let's see who was the good things that was should afterwards be revealed. Hebrews 9 verse 11. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. Come on. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come. Stop right there. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come. He was the good things to come. Meaning what? The, who should afterwards be revealed. That's what we read in Galatians 3. Go back now. Hebrews 10, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. Come on. For the law having a share of good things to come, mm -hmm. and not the very image of the things. And not the very never. image, not the very image of the things to come. Go ahead. Can never with those sacrifices mm -hmm. which they offered year by year continually make the commas there unto perfect. You see that thing? So the subject matter here is the law of animal sacrifice, which was what? Which was a shadow of Christ to come which was a shadow of Christ, which should be afterwards be revealed. Okay, go ahead. For then, would, would they not have ceased to be offered? You see that? It says, for then, would they not have ceased to be offered? If the law of animal sacrifice was perfect, we were going to stop offering year by year continually. But it didn't make us perfect. That's why we didn't stop to offer year by year continually. Go ahead. Because that the worshippers once perished should have had no more conscience of sins. Because once we were perished on the day of atonement, we should not have any more conscience of sin. But we did, because it wasn't perfect. Go ahead. But in those sacrifices, in there those is a remembrance. But in those sacrifices. But in those sacrifices, in those sacrifices, in those sacrifices, go ahead. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of mm -hmm. sins every year. You see what he's saying? But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. So the sacrifices, they reminded us that what? We were in the midst of sin. As pertaining to the conscience. It was a reminder that we're in the midst of sin. That's why we keep doing it. Year by year. Continuing. Go ahead. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. You see that he didn't he didn't make the karma there unto perfect. He didn't take away sins, right? Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, when he cometh into the world, we should afterwards be revealed because we were shut up unto the faith. We were shut, we were still under the law of animal sacrifice. But when he cometh into the world, when Christ came into the world, when he was afterwards revealed, what happened? He says, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. You see that sacrifice and offerings don't do that anymore. Go ahead. But a body has thou prepared me. But a body has thou prepared. That's what we read in Galatians 2, verse, Colossians 2, 17. But the body has thou prepared. The body is of Christ. Read. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. The Lord has no pleasure. He had, he had no pleasure in that anymore because we didn't change. Read. Then said I, no. I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. Mm -hmm. To do thy will, O God. You see that? That's some heavy, that's a very heavy verse right here. I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. Meaning what? The law of animal sacrifice that was a shadow of things to come, it, it was all about, it was all making reference to Christ. Okay, go ahead. Above when he said, mm -hmm. sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings. An offering for sin, thou wouldest not. You see that? An offerings for sin. An offerings for sin. 
that would is not. Don't do that anymore. Go ahead. Neither has pleasures therein, which are offered by the law. Which are offered by the law. Which law? This law that we are reading about. The law of animal sacrifice. You understand? It couldn't make us perfect. Go ahead. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first first covenant. The first covenant is doing away with the first covenant of animal sacrifice. Because that's the subject. Go ahead. That he may establish the second. That he may establish the new covenant that we read in Jesus 8. Verse 8. Read. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Meaning what? You don't want sacrifices no more. By the which will, we, we, who's the we? Israelites. We are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Not year by year continuous. Christ did it once. That's it. You understand? Give me that in Hebrews 6 and go back to Galatians actually. Go back to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians 3. Read verse 20, verse 24 again. Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. You see that? Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster. Who's the our again? Israelites, who was kept under the law before faith came. The law of animal sacrifice was our schoolmaster. This is the schoolmaster of the law that we are under. The law of animal sacrifice. You understand? So now it was what? To bring us unto Christ. So that was to rehearse, to bring us unto Christ. So that what? We can purge our conscience from dead works. Watch this. Hebrews 6 and 1. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Come on. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, mm -hmm. let us go on unto perfection. You see that? So therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. What is the school? What is the, what is the school master called? What is the master of the school called? The principle. What we're reading here says, therefore, leaving the principle, meaning the school master of the doctrine of Christ. What is that? The law of animal sacrifice. Let us go unto the let us go on unto perfection. The new covenant under Christ. You understand? Go ahead. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. The dead works is the what? The carnal ordinances of the blood and the bull, the blood of bulls and of calf, which did not take away sin. You understand? Go ahead. And of faith toward God. And of faith toward God. You see that? So go back, Galatians 3. Verse 24. Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. Read. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, mm -hmm. that we might be justified by faith. That we might be what? That we might be justified by faith. That we might be justified. That we might be justified by faith. Why? Because we are no longer under the schoolmaster. Because we're no longer under the schoolmaster, we are going to be justified by the faith that we have in the sacrifice that Christ would make once for all. Watch this. Give me that in Romans 10 verse 4. That we might be justified by faith. Who's the we again? Israel. Israel. You understand? That's the we that will be justified by faith. Read that. Romans 10 verse 4. We're still dealing with Romans 6 and 1. Galatians 3 24. It's all going into the same thing. Okay. Read that. Romans 10 verse 4. Romans chapter 10 verse 4. Come on. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness mm -hmm. to everyone that believeth. You see that? Christ is the end of the law. What law? The law of animal sacrifice that we read about. For righteousness to everyone that believeth. So everyone that believes on Christ, Christ is the end of the law of animal sacrifice because now we are going to be justified by the faith of Christ. No longer by the faith that the animal has his blood has been filled and our sins are forgiven. You understand? Go ahead. For Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law. You see that? Moses described the righteousness which is of the law. Which law? 
the law of animal sacrifice. Go ahead. That the man which doeth those things shall live by them. That the man which doeth those things. What things? The carnal ordinances that pertain to the law of animal sacrifice. Diverse washing, burnt offerings, meat offerings, drink offerings, sin offerings. Do you understand? Right? But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. The righteousness which is of faith, meaning the righteousness which is under Christ now, okay, is on this wise. Meaning what? If you keep God's commandments, you will receive the wisdom to understand the righteousness that is coming of believing on Christ's sacrifice. Right? Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? Mm -hmm. That is to bring Christ down from above. Right. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Meaning what? Who's going to, listen, the carnal ordinances of the old, of the old covenant, guess what? It was the words. We had to do a lot of carnal ordinances in order for us to receive atonement. The apostle Paul is saying, under Christ, you don't have to go through all that. You understand? Because when you do that, then Christ is dead in vain. You see the point? That's what he's saying right there. The proof of that, yes, yes, Romans 11. Get Romans chapter 11, verse 6. Watch this. Romans chapter 11, verse 6. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Stop right there. It says, if by, and if by grace, then it is no more of works. I mean, the grace we know is, is going into Christ. Then it is no more of works. What works? He's talking about the works of the law of animal sacrifice. The carnal ordinances and diverse uh, washings and, and sacrifices that we had to do. Go ahead. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. Otherwise, the grace of Christ is no more grace. If we what? If we focusing on the works of the law of animal sacrifice, then grace is no more. Go ahead. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace? You see what he's saying? Is that then if it be of works, if it be of the works of the law of animal sacrifice, then it is no more grace. That means grace is null and void. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Otherwise, work is no more work. Otherwise, work is no more work, meaning the works of the law that he had to do under the law of animal sacrifice. So what is he saying? He's telling us, no, listen, if you are under grace, there's no need for you to do the works of the law of animal sacrifice. But if you want to remain under the work, you have to do the things that came with it. That's what he says in Romans 10. Read that again, Romans 10, verse 5, because he says the same thing. Watch this. Romans chapter 10, verse 5. Mm-hmm. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, mm -hmm. that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. You see that? Saying the same thing. That the man which doeth those things that come with the law of animal sacrifice, you have to live by them. And we can't live by them. You understand? Because it was costly. It wasn't free. It was not free. That's why the scribes and Pharisees they were holding on to that. You understand? Now, Galatians, watch this. Um, no, no. Romans 10, read verse 6. Watch this. Romans chapter 10, verse 6. Mm -hmm. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Stop right there. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. What is he talking about? The righteousness which is of faith. Go to Galatians 3, read verse 22 now. Let's see what it means. The righteousness which is of faith. Galatians chapter 3, verse 22. Mm -hmm. But the scripture has concluded all under sin. You see that? The scripture concluded that all are under sin. Who's the all that are under sin? Get Daniel 9, verse 11. We come in there. The scripture has concluded all under sin. He said the same thing in Romans, by the way. Okay, Romans 3. You can go to the understanding, Romans 3, 23, to get that understanding. I'm not going over that tonight. Get that. Daniel 9, verse 11. Daniel, chapter 9, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. You see that? When it says all are under sin, or all have sinned, it's talking about all Israel, all 12, we transgress under the old covenant. We broke every law that was given to us. Read. Even by departing, mm -hmm. that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, 
and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. You see that? Because we have sinned against him. So all Israel, when it says all have sinned or all have transgressed, talk about all Israel. Go back to Galatians 3, verse 22 again. Galatians chapter 3, verse 22. Mm -hmm. But the scripture has concluded all under sin. That's what we read in Daniel 9, verse 7. Wait. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ but might be what? given to them. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ. You see that? But the promise by faith of Jesus Christ. When it says the righteousness which is of faith, that's what we read in the righteousness of faith is the promise by faith of Jesus Christ under the new covenant. Go ahead. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. That believe in the sacrifice that Christ made that through death we're going to receive atonement. Give me Romans 5 verse 11. Romans chapter 5 verse 11. Go ahead. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. by whom we have now received the atonement. We see that we joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by what he did on the cross, by whom, meaning Christ, we have now received the atonement. We have now received the sacrifice. Go back to Galatians chapter 3. Read verse 22 again. Galatians chapter 3 verse 22. Read. But the scripture has concluded all under sin mm -hmm. that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. By be given to them that believe in the sacrifice that, that Christ made, that, that we have now we have received the atonement, meaning the sacrifice once for all. You understand? Go back now, read Galatians. Galatians chapter, chapter 3, verse 24 now. Read, jump down to verse 24. Watch this. Galatians chapter 3 verse 24. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. You see that? The law of animal sacrifice was our schoolmaster. That's why we have to leave the principle of the doctrine of Christ, which is what? The law of animal sacrifice. Now we come now unto perfection. Okay? So that's what we read. Wherefore, the law was, was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. That what? That we might be justified by faith. That we might be justified by the faith of Christ and the sacrifice that he has made. That's why it says that it might be given to them that believe. Now give me Galatians 2.16. Galatians chapter 2 verse 16. Pray. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Stop right there. Knowing that. How would you, how do we know? Because guess what? Christ is preached now. What Christ did is the new covenant. That's why it says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. How did they know? Because it was taught by Christ and their, their disciples. It was, Christ, it was taught by the apostles after Christ left. You see that? Knowing that a man is not justified. A man, we are no longer supposed to be. Justification goes into forgiveness. We are no longer going to be forgiven by doing the works of the law. Of animal sacrifice to receive atonement. Go ahead. But by the faith of Jesus Christ. You see that? But, the, but, but by the faith that we have in the sacrifice that Christ made, which was once and for all. Read. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ. You see that the apostles are saying, listen, even we, we, is we the apostles, we have believed in Jesus Christ, what he told us. Go ahead. That we might be justified by the faith of Christ mm -hmm. and not by the works of the law. Of animal sacrifice. Come on. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. You see that? For because by the works of the law of animal sacrifice to receive atonement, no flesh, no Israelite is going to be forgiven. You see the point? Because now when you want to go back to the law of animal sacrifice, Christ is in vain. Grace is no more grace. Like we read in Romans 11. You men understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, um, read on verse 17. Come on. Verse 17. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ. While we seek to be forgiven under Christ. Go ahead. 
We ourselves also are found sinners. We are found, we found ourselves breaking God's law, right? Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Did Christ give us license to break his law? Get that in track. 15 verse 20. Ecclesiastes chapter 15 verse 20. Mm -hmm. He has commanded no man to do wickedly. Come on. Neither has he given any man license to sin. You see that Christ did not give any man license to break his law. Now that we are under Christ. He didn't give us license to break his commandments. Like they teach in the Christian church. So now go back. Galatians 2 verse 17. Galatians chapter 2 verse 17. Mm -hmm. But if when we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Mm -hmm. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Did Christ give us license to break his law? Come on. God forbid. Meaning no. He did not give it. He did not command any man to do wickedly. Neither had he given any man license to sin. Now that we are under Christ. Next verse. Go ahead. For if I build again the things which I destroyed. If you build again the things which you destroyed. What are the things that you destroyed? Your, the old man with his wicked demonic deeds. If you build again, meaning you do again the things that you destroyed. You go back to your old sins that you repented from. Go ahead. I make myself a transgressor. You make yourself a, a sinner. Why is he saying that? Get that in James 4, 17. You make yourself a transgressor. Why? Read that. James chapter 4, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You see that? You know better, you do better. That's what he's saying. That's what the apostle James was saying. That's what the Apostle Paul was saying. You understand? Now watch this. Give me... Um, go back to Galatians 3 now. Galatians 3. Read verse 25 now. Galatians chapter 3 verse 25. Read. But after that faith is come, mm -hmm. we are no longer under a schoolmaster. But, uh, but, but after that... Now Christ is revealed... Like we read in verse 23, it says we are no longer under the schoolmaster. We are no longer under the law of animal sacrifice. Why? Go back to Hebrews 6 and 1 again. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. You see that? We are no longer under the schoolmaster. Go ahead. Let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, and of faith toward God. You see that? So that's the same thing he's saying. But after that Christ is now come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. We must leave the principles of the doctrine of Christ, the schoolmaster of the law of animal sacrifice. Go back to Galatians now, 3 verse 26. Galatians chapter 3 verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Read again. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. Mm -hmm. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For ye, who is the ye again? Israelites. For you, Israelites, are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Why? Go back to Hebrews 8. Read Hebrews 8. Read verse 8 again. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Read that because guess what? Um, we are all the children. Who is the we that are all the children of God? Israelites that are now under the new covenant. Read that. Hebrews 8 verse 8. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 8. Come on. For finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. You see that thing? So the house of Israel and the house of Judah, we are all the children of what? The children of God by faith in Christ Jesus under the new covenant under Christ. Go back. Galatians 3 27 now. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. Mm -hmm. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. He says, As many of you, you who, you Israelites, that were kept under the law before Christ came. 
It says, as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew 3, verse 11. It says, you, you have baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Watch this. Matthew 3, verse 11. You know what? Hmm. Before you get Matthew 3, right? Get Romans 6, verse 3. Let's start. I'm going to go this route, okay? Romans 6, verse 3. What does it mean to be baptized into Christ, be put on Christ? Watch this. Romans 6, verse 3. Romans chapter 6, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? You see that so many of us. Who's the us again? Israelites, okay? Israel is still is, is addressing the 12 tribes of Israel. That's who the Romans are. You understand? Israelites scattered in Rome. Hmm. Somebody might say I'm making that up. Get that in um, Romans 1. Okay, verse 7. Romans 1, verse 7. Read it. Romans chapter 1, verse 7. Come on. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. You see that? To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Is, who is he making reference to? The beloved of God, they are called to be saints. Get that in um, get that in Baruch chapter 3, verse 36. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Read that. Baruch chapter 3, verse 36. Mm -hmm. He has found out all the way of knowledge and has given it unto Jacob his servant and to Israel his beloved. You see that? And to Israel, his beloved. So go back to Romans 1, verse 7 again. Romans chapter 1, verse 7. Mm -hmm. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Called to be saints. Called to be saints. Beloved of God, as the Israelites, called to be saints. Why? Because they were living like the actual Romans, meaning white people, Edomites in Rome. That's why now we must return back as the saints of the most high like God. We read it earlier in Psalms 148, verse 14, and Psalms 50, verse 5. Read on. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So now we know who the Romans are. Israelites scattered in Rome. Go back to Romans 6, read verse 3 again. Romans chapter 6, verse 3. Come on. Know ye not that so many of us as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death. You say that so many of us, who's the us? Israelites. He says we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death. He's going to explain what that means. Go ahead. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. You see that we're buried with him by baptism into death. Because when Christ died, it was also symbolic of us spiritually dying and being born again. Okay, go ahead. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by mm -hmm. the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. You see the new man being born again. Come on. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Mm. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth, we should not save sin. You see what he's saying? So now he's saying, likewise, the way when Christ was, was crucified, you understand, and died, we also must do the same and rise again, just like he rose again the same day. Okay? Now give me Matthew 3, verse 11. Okay? And as we are baptized, as we are, we are now in the resurrection, we must walk in the newness of life. Here's what it means. Then now that we are under Christ, this is what here's how we are baptized under Christ. Okay, get that in Matthew 3, verse 11. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. Go ahead. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. This is John speaking. He says, I baptize you with water unto repentance. Go ahead. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, mm -hmm. whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You see what he's saying? He says, he, that's Christ, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. 
So Christ was baptized us with the Holy Ghost. What is the Holy Ghost? God's love. He baptized us with the Holy Ghost. Get that in Matthew. You know what? No, give me, give me, give me John. Give me John 20. Okay? Give me John 20, verse 22. This is how he baptized us with the Holy Ghost. Watch this. John chapter 20, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Read it again. John chapter 20, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. You see that? That's the baptism of Christ. He says, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. He baptized us with the Holy Ghost. God's laws. He gave us the understanding of the scriptures that we must be born again. Apply his laws, statutes, and commandments. Luke 24. Okay. Luke 24. Read verse 45. Watch this. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Come on. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. You see that? He baptized us with the Holy Ghost. He gave us understanding of the scriptures. That's what we read in here. Now go back to where he was at. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28 now. Let's get into it. Because this whole time we've been reading about Israelites, we've already established who the Galatians are. You understand? Now read Galatians 3, now read verse 28. Okay, watch this. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Mm -hmm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Stop right there. Because remember, he's talking to Israelites. He's not talking to anybody else. He's still talking to Israelites. We went over the Apostle Paul's journey in the churches of Galatia, which is in Greece. The Apostle Paul is saying there is neither Jew nor Greek. Let's deal with that. Why are you saying Jew, no Greek? Let's deal with the Jew part. Give me the book. Give me the book of Acts, okay? No, no. Give me Romans 2. Romans 2, verse 17. First. Romans chapter 2, when it says, there is neither Jew. What is he talking about? There is neither Jew, no Greek. There is neither Jew. Let's deal with the Jew part. Read that. Romans chapter 2, verse 17. Come on. Behold, thou art called a Jew. You see that? Thou art called a Jew. Go ahead. And restest in the law. You see that? Because the Jews in Jerusalem, they rested in the law. They knew the law. That is that there is neither, there is neither Jew nor Greek. The Jews in Jerusalem, they rested in the They still kept the law. You understand? Unlike the scattered Israelites that the Apostle Paul had, was commissioned to go and teach. Read again. Verse 17. Romans chapter 2, verse 17. Come on. Behold, thou art called a Jew mm -hmm. and restest in the law. You see that? And restest in the law. Go ahead. And makest thy boast of God. And makest thou boast of God because there were still people being sacrifices and all that. So that's why it says, and makest thy boast of God. In the sacrifices that I was making, that was there's neither Jew. That's what it means because the Jew rested in the law. Now give me Acts 13, 46. Watch this. Acts 13, verse 46. Read that. Acts chapter 13, verse 46. Because the apostle Paul, before he went to deal with the Gentiles and all that, these are the people that he was, he was he had to go and teach first. Why? To fulfill prophecy. We're going to read about that next. Read that, verse 46. Acts chapter 13, verse 46. Come on. Then Paul and Barnabas were bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been so spoken what? to you. It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken so to you. He says, he says, It was necessary that the word of God should first, should first, should first have has been spoken to you. You who? You Jews that rested in the law that we read in Romans 2 verse 17. Go ahead. But seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, mm -hmm. no, we turn to the Gentiles. You see that? So the word of God went to the Jews first. The Jews in Jerusalem, you understand? It's because they rested in the law of animal sacrifice. That's why they were boasting of the sacrifices that they would make. You understand? It's because it was needful, it was necessary 
that the word of God should go to the Jews first. Okay, Romans 1 verse 15. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Mm -hmm. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. You see that? To the Jew first, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. So the word, it was needful that the word must go to the Jew first. The Jew first. First. Give me Romans 2 verse 9. Romans chapter 2 verse 9. I want to show you how these words are used interchangeably. Because yes, it's to the Jew first and also to the Greek. What we read in Acts 13.46 it says to the Jew first and also to the law, which and to the Gentile. Watch what he says. He's, also, he's saying the same thing. He's using a specific word interchanging. Watch this. Read that. Romans chapter 2 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. You see that? Of the Jew first, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Notice he's using Gentile and Greek interchangeably. Hmm. Why did it? Why was it needful for the word of God to go to the Jew first? Let's get the prophecy. Get Zechariah twelve verse seven. Zechariah chapter twelve verse seven. Go ahead. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. You see that the Lord also shall save shall save the tents of Judah first. Ha. Huh. Because the word needed to be taught to them first. Why? To fulfill this prophecy in Zechariah. Okay, go ahead. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. You see that that northern kingdom don't magnify themselves against Judah. That's why Judah needed to what? To be woken up first. You understand? That the Lord put the spirit upon Judah that lion spirit first, then Judah will go out and teach the rest of the tribe God's law. You understand? Get that in Deuteronomy 23 verse 7. Because the Lord knew, or Judah will be following after the woman. Judah will be singing love songs and all that. The Lord said, hell no. Judah must wake up first. He needs to, the lion spirit must be on Judah. Read that. Deuteronomy 33 verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 7. Go ahead. And this is the blessing of Judah. Mm -hmm. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him unto his people. You see that? Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring Judah unto his people. That means Judah will know who his people are. Go ahead. Let his hands be sufficient for him. Mm -hmm. And be thou in help to him from his enemies. You see that the hands of Judah will be sufficient for him because the Lord will put the spirit on Judah to do what? To get the work done. You understand? So because only the Christ will wake up Judah, will put that spirit on Judah to do what Judah is supposed to do. To go out to the seat and roll behind enemy, enemy line. Read that in Genesis 49 real quick. Genesis 49. Hmm. Some heavy stuff. Genesis 49, read verse 9. Watch this. Genesis chapter 49, verse 9. Go ahead. Judah is a lion's world. You see that? Judah is a young, powerful lion. A young lion. Judah is a lion's world. Go ahead. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. You see that? From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Go ahead. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. You see what happened to Judah? Judah couched as a lion. You understand? When he was supposed to go, you know, when, when you know a prey, you know, a lion, you know, going after a prey, I get it. That means the lion must have that hunting spirit. The lion must have that devouring spirit. Guess what? Instead of Judah having that lion hunting spirit to go after the prey, what did Judah do? Judah stood down and he couched as a lion mm. in politics. In Christianity, singing love songs, you understand, wearing tight pants and blowing his head. That would work, that would, that is what would happen to Judah. The Lord said, mm, Hell no. This is what the Lord will do for Judah. Go ahead. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? 
Only the only guys who will rise Judah up. Yet the black Messiah had to put the spirit of a lion on Judah to stop couching as a lion, to stop couching down as an old lion. You understand? Christ will be the only one that will raise Judah up. You understand? Now Judah mm, is a lion, is a young, powerful lion. You understand? He's growing. Judah is growing. All praises to the Lord. You understand? Now, mm, brother, you know, stay in the spirit. Now, go back to Zechariah 12, verse 7. The book of Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 7. Come on. The Lord also shall save the tent of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. You see that? So now the Lord says, He will raise Judah first. That's what it says. First, the word of God should, it was needful that the word of God should first, should first have been spoken unto you. Now, go back to Galatians now. Go back to Galatians 3. Read verse 28 again. Galatians 3, verse 28. Read that thing again. Now we understand when it goes into what the Jew. It was the, there's no difference between the Jews that grew up in that grew up in Jerusalem that rested in the law. They boasted in the sacrifice of their head made and what and the Greek and the Jew that grew up under Greek custom. Now read that. Galatians 3, verse 28. The book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Mm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither there what? Is ni there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Let's deal with the Greek part. Give me the book of Acts 13 verse 14. Well, I'm going to go back there because I know some of you forgot already. We read it earlier. You understand? The Israelites that were scattered in Greece. You understand? In those churches of Galatia. Now read that Acts 13 verse 14. Read that. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verses 14. Read. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch mm -hmm. in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. You see that? So the apostle Paul and the brethren that were laboring in the group is as when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia. These are the, these are the churches of Galatia. You understand? These are Greek islands where Israel were scattered. You understand? So when it says there's neither Jew nor Greek, the Greek is making reference to Israel scattered in Greek islands. Okay? Watch this. Give me Acts 18 verse 23. Again, we read it earlier. The book of Acts chapter 18 verses 23. And after Wait. he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order. Strengthening all the disciples. You see that? So he says he went over all the country of Galatia, you understand? And Phrygia strengthening all the disciples. Now, these were Greek islands where Israelites were scattered. Watch this. Give me second Maccabees 6, verse 6. Why they were calling themselves Greek? Okay, read that. Second Book of Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 6. Read. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep the Sabbath days or ancient feasts mm -hmm. or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. You see that? So under the Greek, we were forbidden to profess to call ourselves Israelites. We were not allowed to call ourselves Jews. You understand? So they, they forced us to change our nationality. It started with the Greek. Although many of our folks, we still knew that we're Israelites and we still knew that we're supposed to keep God's laws. But the Greek, that was the beginning of them forcing us to renounce our nationality. You understand? It started with the Greek. Now watch this. Keep reading. And in the day of the king's birth every month, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And when the feast of Pakus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Pakus carrying ivy. Bacchus. So Bacchus is Bacchana, Labor Day Parade. Where you, meaning Bacchus is the god, is the sex god, or is the god of sex and wine and orgies. So that's that's what Bacchus is. So now it says on the king's birthday, every month, if his birthday was on September the 17th, every month on the 17th, you would they would say they would force us to celebrate his birthday. And during his birthday, this is what they did: sex, wine, getting drunk, and having orgies. 
That's what they forced us to do, to renounce our faith, to pollute us with the abominable things. Verse 8, go ahead. Moreover, they went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen mm -hmm. by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews. Go ahead. That they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. You see that thing? So they wanted us to be partakers of their sacrifices. Go ahead. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles. You see that? Whoso would not conform themselves to the manners, meaning the customs of the Gentiles. So who are the Greeks? Who are they called? Gentiles. So they were forcing us to conform to their customs. That's how our forefathers that were scattered in those Greek islands in Galatia were called Gentiles. We're called Greeks. You understand? Go ahead. Should be put to death. Mm -hmm. Then might a man have seen the present misery. Now give me Second Maccabees chapter 4 now. Second Maccabees 4, read verse 9. Watch this. When we were under the Greek, this is what our forefathers that made league with the Greek, this is what they compel our people to do. Watch this. Second Maccabees 4, verse 9. Read. Second Book of Maccabees chapter 4, verse 9. Beside mm. this, he promised to assign 150 more if he, if he might have license to set him up a place for exercise. This is Jason, that wicked Negro. This is Jason, that wicked Negro. Okay, go ahead. And for the training up of youth in the fashions of the heathen. You see what Jason did? He, he, he wanted to what? He set up a place of exercise and to train up youth to do what? To join the Olympics. The Olympics, you understand? After in the, in the fashions of the heathen. Why do you think the heathens are so obsessed with sports? You understand? It comes from this time during the time of the Greeks. Go ahead. And to write them off Jerusalem by the name of Antiochians. You see what they were doing? Now they were even changing their names by the names of Antiochians. They were calling themselves Antiochians, meaning Greeks. Because Antiochus was a Greek. They were calling themselves Antiochian by the name of the Greeks. You see what they were doing? This is what was going on during this time. Watch this. Give me the book of Titus. Give me the book of Galatians. I'm going to show you something. Get the book of Galatians 2. Galatians 2, we read it earlier. But I'm going to show you something here. Galatians 2, verse 1. Watch this. The book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 1. Great. Then, 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. So now the Apostle Paul went to Jerusalem with Barnabas and he took Titus along with them. Now read verse 3. Watch this. The book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 3. You know what? Read verse 2. Watch this. Come on. The book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 2. And I went up by revelation. Mm -hmm. and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. Stop right there. It says what? It says he communicated unto them that gospel, which gospel? The true gospel of Christ, which I preach among the Gentiles. Remember, when we read the book of the Maccabees, they forced our people to conform to the manners of the Gentiles. So those Israelites that were scattered in, in those Greek islands, in those churches of Galatia, they were calling themselves Gentiles because they were forced to conform to the manners of the Gentiles, not only that, but to renounce their nationality as Israelites. You understand? They were calling themselves Gentiles, meaning Greeks. Okay, go ahead. But privately to them which were of reputation, mm -hmm. lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Now watch the next verse. Go ahead. The book, of the book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 3. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek. Stop right there. You see Titus, it says Titus, well, who was with the Apostle Paul in verse 1, and Barnabas, it says, was with the Apostle Paul, being a Greek. So Titus was part of these Gentiles that the Apostle Paul had to teach the true gospel of Christ. Titus also, he was what? He was, a, he was an Israelite. Grew up, he grew up in under Greek custom. 
That's why it says, be a Greek. Was he a Greek by nationality? No. He was an Israelite. Just like today we call ourselves South Africans, but we are not South Africans. We are Israelites scattered in South Africa. So that's what was happening here to our forefather Titus. Let's read that. Galatians 3, verse 28. Read that. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Go ahead. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Great. Right. There is neither bond nor free. Mm -hmm. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So the Apostle Paul here was writing to the church of Galatia. Okay, get that in First Peter 1 and 1. So we see who the Galatians are. He was writing to the church that was the Israelites that was scattered in Galatia. Okay, First Peter 1, verse 1. After, after, after this, you brothers must know how to break this down. Now. Get that, First Peter 1 and 1. Read that. First Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. Peter. An apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, mm. Galatia. Galatia. So the apostle Peter is writing to the strangers that are scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia. Who are these strangers? Um, let's keep reading. Go ahead. Cappadocia, mm. Asia, and Bithynia. Bithynia. So the strangers that the apostle Peter is writing to is, he says, they are strangers that are scattered in his land. One of those lands is Galatia. Go ahead, verse 2, read. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. So now these strangers that are scattered to this land, they are the elect of God. All this, let's see who the elect is. Get that in Isaiah 45, verse 4. It says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Get that, Isaiah 45, verse 4. Let's see who the elect. Okay, read that. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For Jacob, my servant's sake, Come on. and Israel, mine elect. Who is the elect? Israel, mine elect. And Israel, my elect. So Israel, we are the elect of God. Israel is the elect of God. Okay, so let's go back. Let's, let's go back. First Peter chapter 1, verse 2. First Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. So this is a, these strangers that are scattered in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, is that they are elect. They are, these are Israelites, you understand, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Because why is he saying the foreknowledge of God the Father? Because why? The Lord was dealing with Israelite Israel. He dealt with us in the Old Testament, also in the New Testament. You understand? Now, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. The elect of God according to the knowledge in the past, meaning in the Old Testament. Get that in uh, Amos 3 verse 1. Let's see the Israelites. Let's get let's let's push it some more. Let's prove it some more. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. I want to deal with that part. The foreknowledge, the knowledge of God before. The elect according to the knowledge of God before. Watch this. Read that. Amos chapter 3, verse 1. Read. Hear this word that the Lord had spoken against you, O children of Israel, mm -hmm. against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying. So now when it says against the whole family, it's talking about all 12 tribes of Israel. That's the whole family. Go ahead. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. You see that? It says, you Israelites, only you have I known of all the families of the earth. Of all the nations of the earth, the Lord says he only knows us. This is the foreknowledge of God before. Go ahead. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So the Lord says he will punish us for our iniquities because he gave us the law. Okay, so go back. Okay, go back to First Peter 1, verse 2. Read that. First Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, and to obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. So it's letting you know that Christ only died for the twelve tribes. That's why it says, um, through sanctification of the Spirit, and to obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Because Christ only died for the twelve tribes. You understand? They elect according to the foreknowledge of God. Right? Grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. You see that? So grace of God is only to the Israelites. Peace, meaning what? Peace among all 12, because there was no peace among us. You understand? There was a split in the nation. 
So that's what the Apostle Peter is saying. So go back to Galatians now. Chapter 3, verse 28. Now we understand what the Galatians are. The elect of God, according to the foreknowledge of God, we understand the Father, and also that Christ only died for the elect. The same people that the Apostle Paul is writing to in the book of Galatians. Okay, read that. Galatians 3, 28. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Read. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither Jew nor Greek. So we dealt with the Jew part. Okay. So now we are dealing with the Greek part. Now we're going to deal with the Greek. We've touched on a lot of scriptures regarding that. So I'm going to pick up where I left off. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Because why? We were scattered. Our forefathers were scattered in, in Greek island. Okay. Cappadocia, Bithynia, Galatia. Okay. Pontus. Those are Greek islands. Those are Greek cities where we were scattered. So now we're going to touch on when we were scattered under the, the, you know, in those Greek islands, we were moving according to the customs of the Greeks because we followed their customs and ways and traditions. Okay. Now give me First Maccabees 1. First Maccabees 1, verse 41. When we were in, during the time of the Greeks, this is what took place. Okay. Read that. First Maccabees 1, verse 41. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Read. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom mm -hmm. that all should be one people. That all should be one people. Remember, Antiochus is following the footsteps of his forefathers that came before him. Because the forefathers that he's following is, is following the uh, Alexander, the so-called great uh, general. Alexander's four generals, guess what? Antiochus comes out of there. He comes out of the Seleucus Empire or the Solutions Empire. Okay, watch this. Hold this. Let's get that in um, Second Maccabees. Okay, get Second Maccabees four. Second Maccabees chapter four, because Antio he comes out of the Seleucus Empire, so he was following the footsteps of his forefathers that came before him. Watch this. Second Maccabees four, read verse seven. Let's see Antiochus the lineage that he comes from. Read. Second Maccabees chapter four, verse seven. Go ahead. But after the death of Seleucus, when Antiochus called Epiphanes, took the kingdom. Meaning he took the kingdom of the Greeks in the 137th year of the Greek empire. He took the kingdom of the Greeks, Antiochus. Right? Antiochus called Epiphanes, took the kingdom. Jason, the brother of Ananias, labored underhand to be high priest. So now you've got... We've got Antiochus, who comes out of the Seleucus Empire. Okay, so now he was following the Alexander's four generals. He comes out of the Seleucus Empire, but he's following Alexander's four generals, which Seleucus is one of them. Okay, and guess what? What he's going to do now, we're going to read about that example in 2nd Maccabees 6. We read it earlier on, but I'm going to repeat it again. Go back to 1st Maccabees 1, read verse 41 again. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. So now what Antiochus was doing was he was introducing democracy. You understand? This is the birth of democracy under Antiochus. Okay, go ahead. And everyone should leave his laws. You see that? And everyone should leave his laws. So what are they telling them? Listen, you're all going to be Hellenized. You're all going to become Greek. Because guess what? America is pushing that today. America wants everybody to move according to their move. Guess what? South Africa is 100% is with that. Because they keep saying Mandela's Rainbow Nation. Where do you think that comes from? They, they, they're following America, which is what America is the Greek, the Roman. You understand? So now when it says Man, Nelson Mandela's Rainbow Nation, guess where they're getting that from? They're getting that from America. America is an extension of ancient Rome, which guess what? Rome, when it came into power, they swallowed the Greeks. They became the Greco Roman Empire. Okay, go ahead, read that again, verse 42. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 42. Read. And everyone should leave his laws. Mm -hmm. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. So all these other nations, they agreed according to the commandment of King Antiochus. This is what is called an executive order. So Antiochus put out an executive order. That listen, everybody should leave their laws, and guess what? It is all the heathens agree. You understand? Watch this. Go ahead. Yea, 
Many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. You see what happened when Antiochus put out the executive order, the decree? It says many of the Israelites, they consented to the religion of the Greek. What was the religion? Read verse 41 again. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Wait. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. You see that democracy. So the, 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 the religion that our forefathers consented to was democracy. Just like they are doing today, you've got your ANC, you've got your EFF, you've got your Action SA, you've got your IFP, so on and so forth. They have consented to the religion of the Greek. And they think that using politics to, you know, they, they think that they're going to use politics to bring our people out of oppression. That's not going to happen. Because they're, guess what? They are using the tool that was created by the oppressor to do what? To keep us oppressed. That's why people, when you bring the Bible, especially in politics, they don't want to hear it. Not only that, our people that are in the Christian church, when you bring the Bible, they don't want to hear it. What is that letting you know? Politics, democracy, and Christianity is all the same thing. Two sides of the same demonic coin. Watch this. Give me, uh, let me show you the example that Antiochus was following when he was introducing democracy that all the Israelites, the Israelites, they also consent. You understand? Meaning everybody must leave their laws and follow Greek culture. Watch this. Second Maccabees 6. Okay. Because Antiochus is following one of his forefathers. Second Maccabees 6. Read verse 6. Okay. Second Maccabees chapter 6, verse 6. Great. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts. So it was unlawful for us to observe the Sabbath or any of our high holidays. It was against the laws of the Greek. That was says everyone should leave his law. Who was he targeting particularly? Us. Because we were the ones that had the laws of God with us. Read. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. You couldn't profess your church yourself to be an Israelite. It was against Greek law. Read. And in the day of the king's birth, every month, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. You see that the sacrifices of their birthday to celebrate birthdays with them. You understand? They fought them, right? And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus, carrying ivy. So we were forced to partake in birthdays, okay? So now, not only did they disallow us to profess ourselves to be Jews, not only did they disallow us to observe our high holidays, they say, you're not going to observe your high holidays no more, neither will you call yourself a Jew. But when we denounce, when they forced our forefathers to denounce our, our high, to denounce ourselves as Jews, Jews, not only that, but to stop celebrating, observing our high holidays that God gave us, they gave us their holidays, they gave us new ones, like birthdays. You understand? Market. Okay, come on. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen. Mm -hmm. You see that? But when it says a decree, a decree will be a what will be an executive order today. That's what it's called. A decree is an executive order. Like for instance, you know when it says everybody must wear masks, that was an executive order because everybody was required to wear masks. When they told everybody, listen, lockdown, nobody must be moving around in the streets and all that, shops closed. That was an executive order. So likewise, the Ptolemy did the same thing to force us to partake in their carnal audience. Okay, go ahead. By the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews. You see that? So during this time, Ptolemy, he was the king of the Greeks. Guess what he did? He forced our forefathers to do what? And the, the neighboring cities, the cities they gave him that were, that were, that consented to Greek religion and Greek rule. You understand? Right? That they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. You see that the proof of that is in verse 7. They forced us to do what? To observe the same fashion as them and partake in their sacrifice. Okay, go ahead. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. So what did they do? They killed us. When we did not consent to their customs, they put us to death. So now, you see what he's saying? And whoso of the Israelites, remember, this is during the time of the Ptolemy. I want you men to understand that. And sisters as well. This is during the time of the Petroleum. You understand this? Alexander is there and gone. Now his generals are ruling over the realm that he commanded them to when he died. Petroleum, he is pushing this. 
You understand? So he forced us to conform, you understand, to their manner, to their customs and ways, their tradition. Okay. Now let's get the definition of the word conform. Okay. What does it mean to conform? Now read that. Read that definition, conform. Read that. Definition of conform. Mm -hmm. Verb. Comply with rules, standards, or laws. You see that? So they, they, they forced us to do what? To comply with their rules, their standards, and their so-called laws. You understand? Watch this. Read the next one. Read that. Of a person, behave according to socially acceptable conventions or standards. You see that? That's the, that's the, that's the one that says. It says, behave according to socially acceptable conventions or standards. Remember, the Greeks were big on orgies, big on homosexuality and all that, having bestiality and all that. Guess what? Our forefathers, they joined that those that did not oppose those wicked demonic customs of the Greeks. So today is the same thing. You understand? Today is the same thing. They say when you speak against the LGBT, they say, no, you are homophobic. If that's, if that's what they label us, that's fine. But guess what? We love our people, but our people must come out of those so-called lifestyles. They must repent. We love them, but we will tell them the truth according to the Holy Bible. Okay, now watch this. Um, read that. Read that one right there. Definition of conform. Be similar in form or type. Agree. You see that? It says be similar in form, meaning everything about yourself must change to conform to the manners of the Greeks. You understand? Or type. And you must agree. Okay? Watch this. Read that. Similar. Feet. Feet. Read that. Read that. Read that. Read, read this one. Right here. Read that. Be like. You must be like them. You must be like them in name, in nationality, in culture, in dress code, in diet. You understand? All of that, you must be like them. That's what we read in. And this is during the time of the Ptolemy dynasty. Okay? This is what they was pushing. The Ptolemy was pushing this thing. Now read first Maccabees, second Maccabees, six, verse nine again. Second book of Maccabees, chapter six, verse nine. Go ahead. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. So what did they do? They killed us. When we did not consent to their customs, they put us to death. Read. Then might a man have seen the present misery. Because that was the present misery back then, when we were no longer allowed to observe our customs, nor call ourselves Jews. But I want to show you something. What Antiochus is, is following is following the footsteps of his forefathers. You understand? So now he took it a step first. Go back to First Maccabees 1. Okay, First Maccabees 1. Read verse 43. Because during this time, it was called the period of, it was called the Hellenistic period. Okay? The Hellenistic period. So there is a couple of articles here that I, I you know, I, uh, yeah, read that, read that. Then I'm, we're going to go to the, the article. Read that. First Maccabees 1, 43. Start at verse 40. Read verse 41 to verse 43. Okay. Actually, read both. Read both. Read 41 and 42 only. Then we're going to deal with verse 43. Read that. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Mm -hmm. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. Read. And everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. You see that part right there when it says everyone should leave laws and all the heathens agree that means many of our forefathers did not agree but you had those of our forefathers that agreed they consented to this you understand so let's get the definition of hellenism because it was it was during the hellenistic period where we as a nation we were forced or compelled to observe uh greek culture hold on a second okay can you see my screen Yes, sir. Okay, oh, great. Now, I want you to read that Hellenism. Read that. The definition of Hellenism. Mm -hmm. Now, Hellenism, the national character or culture of Greece, 
especially ancient Greece. You see that especially ancient Greece, meaning the Greece of Alexander and his four generals and those that came up then. So they are taking you all the way back to 333 BC when Alexander took power, the understanding of the kingdom of the Greeks. So Hellenism is when you must change your national character, your cultural character, you understand, to fit, to conform to the manners of the Greeks. Read that. The study or imitation of ancient Greek culture. That's what our people are doing today. Our people were doing it back then. Today, they are following the European persuasion. You understand? The way they dress, how they eat, what, the, what, what holidays to observe and things like that. Your birthday, mother's day, father's day. It's all going back to ancient Greeks, okay? Hellenist, Hellenistic culture. Watch this. Now, I want you to read this. The Hellenistic period. Mm -hmm. The Hellenistic period spans the period of Mediterranean history between the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC and the emergence of the Roman Empire. You see that? So guess what? Hellenism was being pushed by the Greeks the Romans continue to do the same thing. You understand? The Romans continue to push the same thing when they took over. When they met with the Greeks to become the Greco Roman Empire, they did the same thing. They continued that nonsense. Go ahead. The Europe, America is doing the same thing today. Europe is doing the same thing today. You understand? They are pushing the same thing that their forefathers did during the time of the Greeks and the time of the Romans. Go ahead. As signified by the Battle of Actium in 31 BC, and the conquest of Ptolemaic Egypt the following year. You see that Ptolemaic Egypt, because the Ptolemy was pushing the same thing. Now, watch this. Now, yeah, I want to read that. Read that, that definition right there. Devotion to, or imitation of ancient Greek thought, hmm. customs, or styles. You see that? So Hellenism is devotion to, you must be devoted to, um, you know, Greek thought, ancient Greek, and imitate the way they think, their customs and their style, their styles of dressing, their styles of raising kids, their style and definition of what marriage means, so on and so forth. That's what that means, okay? Let's get some more. The beliefs of Hellenism. Read that. What are the beliefs of Hellenism? Mm -hmm. Hellenism is, in practice, primarily centered around polytheistic, and animistic worship. So polytheistic and animistic worship. Now let's go back. Okay, so I want you to read polytheistic. Let's see what it means, polytheistic. Okay, first let's read that. Let's read this definition again first, and then we'll go back to that definition. Read that. What are the beliefs of Hellenism? Hellenism is, in practice, primarily centered around polytheistic and animistic worship. You see that? So the Hellenism primarily is centered around polytheistic and animistic worship. Let's see what that means. Polytheistic goes into worshiping of many gods, okay? Worshiping of, of many gods. I think I went, I touched on that. Let me see if I have that. Mm. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, that's it right there. Read that. Polytheistic. Let's get the definition of what it means. Read. Definition of polytheistic. Mm -hmm. Adjective. Relating to or characterized by belief in or worship of more than one God. You see that that's polytheistic. That's what our people are doing today. They say they believe in God, but they celebrate birthday, Mother's Day, Father's Day. So, so they are not worshiping the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are worshiping Greek God. You understand? Idolatry, polytheistic worshiping of many gods, the goddess of sex, the goddess of, of, of revenue, partying and all that, the goddess of unclean and eating unclean food, so on and so forth. You understand? So that's what it's, it's going into. Worshiping the woman, Inanna, you understand? The queen of heaven, polytheistic. Our people are polytheistic. Okay? Now, this is animistic. Animistic, yeah, I think that's the one. Animism. Read that, animism. The, defini the definition of animism, a noun, the attribution of a living soul to plants, mm. inanimate objects, mm. and natural phenomena. You see that? So it says the attribution of a living soul to plants. So a living soul. So that's why when you look at 
you know, movies like Lord of the Rings, you see a genie moving around, talking. That's, enemy, that's animism, okay? Inanimate objects, natural phenomena, you understand? Storms, rain, and all that, okay? So that's what he's going into. Let's, let's see. Mm, yeah, read that. Animism. What is, what is an example of animistic? Read that. What is an example of animistic? Mm -hmm. Animism pervades a lot of other nature-based religions and spiritual beliefs. Great. Where people call on the spirit of eagle to send and receive messages to the gods. You see that? So, and remember, what is eagle symbol? The eagle. Okay, go ahead. Or the spirits of rain and water during a drought. Where is the, where, 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 what, what is the, what, what is familiar about what you just read? Ancient Egypt. Remember, they worship the, the sky god, Zeus. You understand? Because when the Lord brought the, the, the place upon Egypt, okay, he brought the hail. They thought that Luke was going to protect them from the hail that the Lord brought down. So guess what? All of this goes back to ancient Egypt. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Maccabees 1, verse 17. Because this is one of Alexander's uh, four generals. Okay, watch this. We read about him in 2nd Maccabees 6. This is the Ptolemy. Watch this. Read it. 1st Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Wherefore he entered into Egypt with a great multitude, with chariots and elephants and horsemen and a great navy. So now this is talking about is Antiochus. He invaded Egypt. Watch this. Read. And made war against Ptolemy, king of Egypt. You see that? But Ptolemy was looking after Egypt. That's the realm that Alexander gave unto him before he dropped dead. Read. But Ptolemy was afraid of him and fled. And many were wounded to death. You see that? He says, many were wounded to death. Go ahead. Thus, they got the strong cities in the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. and he took the spoils thereof. So now Antiochus. He, 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 he ran uh, Ptolemy out and he took over, right? But watch this. Hmm. Ptolemy was looking was all over Egypt. Guess what? Before Ptolemy was divided Alexander's kingdom, guess what? Uh, where Alexander was? Alexander also visited what? Egypt. That's why they call it Alexandria, Egypt. Now, I want you to read this. History of Alexandria. Read that. History of Alexandria. Reading mm -hmm. from Britannica.com. Read foundation and medieval growth greek period alexander the great founded the city in 332 bce after the start of his persian campaign it was to be the capital of his new egyptian dominion and a naval base that would control the mediterranean stop right there so now it says you see what it says is that it was to be talk about egypt now when he was taking over it says uh, it was to be the capital of his new Egyptian dominion and a naval base. So you see what you see. It is a naval base. What is America doing today? America's building is America's got um, embassies in every country, in almost every country. They've got naval bases in almost every country on earth. Which example are they following? They are following the example of their forefathers, the Greeks, Alexander. You see that. That's what Alexander did. He was also establishing naval bases in the, in the places which he conquered. Okay, go ahead. The choice of the site that included the ancient settlement of Rakotis, which dates to 1500 BCE, was determined by the abundance of water from Lake Mariut, hey. uh -huh. then fed by a spare of the canopy Nile, and by the good anchorage provided offshore by the island of Pharaohs. Now let's go down, watch this, read. After Alexander left Egypt, his viceroy, Cleomenes, continued the creation of Alexandria. Okay, with the that's breakup, one of his minions, go ahead. With the breakup of the empire upon Alexander's death in 323 BCE, control of the city mm. passed to his viceroy. Ptolemy the first sorter. You see that? So Ptolemy, after Alexander died, he divided his kingdom. So Ptolemy took Egypt. 
Okay, go ahead. Who founded the dynasty that took his name? You see that? So now that's why it was later after when the, when the Ptolemy took over, he renamed it to the Ptolemy Egypt instead of Alexandria um, Egypt. Okay. But I just wanted to show you that that um, what we're reading here, um, what Antiochus did, he was just following the footsteps of his forefathers that came before him. Okay. Now let's go back to um, um, you know Hellenism. Read that again. What are the beliefs of Hellenism? Mm -hmm. Hellenism is, in practice, primarily centered around polytheistic and animistic worship. Okay, so worshiping of more than one God and also worshiping inanimate objects, trees, okay, the sky, like they did in Egypt, okay, read. Devotees worship the Greek gods. Mm -hmm. Which are the Olympians? Which are the Olympians? So they worship Greek gods, which are the Olympians. Read on. Divinities and spirits of nature, such mm. as nymphs. You see that nymphs? What is a nymph? Let's see. Hmm. You can't make this up here. Let's see. Read that for me. Definition of nymph. Mm -hmm. A mythological spirit of nature. Imagined as a beautiful maiden inhabiting rivers, woods, mm. or mm. other locations. You see that? So they believe that the, 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 the spirit is as a, as a beautiful maiden inhabiting rivers. That's why when you watch you know, movies like um, The Lord of the Rings, that's what you see. Lord of the Rings, you see stuff like that. Um, what else? Um, there's another movie. Um, the legend of the sword, um, you know, King Arthur. You saw there was a woman in the water. You understand? So that's what they, that's what you see here. These images here. Let's click on one of them so we can see what they are talking about. Mm. Well, it's not coming up. Okay, anyway. So now, go ahead. Underworld deities. Sonic. Sonic God. Sonic gods and heroes. You see that? Who's Superman? Superman, Spider-Man, um, you know, Thor, the God of Lightning and whatnot. Yeah, that's where they come from. And guess what? They, where did Alexander get all this stuff? Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. Go ahead. Both physical and spiritual ancestors are greatly honored. Now that's everything I do. Is it both what? Both physical and spiritual ancestors are greatly honored. Both physical and spiritual ancestors are greatly honored. Why do you think our people today, they are into, um, you know, ancestors and sangomas and all that? They get it from the Greeks. The Greeks enforced that. Guess what? The Greeks got it from Egypt. Where did we get it from also? Egypt, because we were there as people for 400 years. You understand? We continue that nonsense even on this side of the earth. You understand? Now, Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy, okay? Deuteronomy 18, verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 9. Before you get that, actually, let's get the definition of Olympian. Read that definition. The definition of Olympian. Mm -hmm. Now, Olympians, any of the pantheon of 12 Greek gods regarded as living on Olympus. So they were living on Olympus, go ahead. So that's what he believed. Olympians is as any of the pantheon of 12 Greek gods regarded as living on Olympus. Let's get the definition of Olympus, okay. Now, read that, Olympus. Definition of Olympus. A mountain in Thessaly that in Greek mythology is the abode of the gods. So all those Greek gods, they believe that that's where they, they live. You understand? On the top of Mount Olympus. Now read that. Mount Olympus is the highest mountain in Greece. You see that Mount Olympus is the highest mountain in Greece. Remember, it says the highest mountain. So now guess what? Today, America is called the Great Mountain. The Great Mountain. You understand? So all of this goes back to where? It goes back to the time of the Greeks. It goes back to Egypt. You understand why? Because the highest mountain goes into the Greek government on earth. Greek was during its time, 
uh, Rome was during its time. America is during its time in the last day, also called Babylon the Great in the Bible. Okay, now I want to show you something. Read this. What's another word for Olympus? Read this. What is another word for Olympus? Mm -hmm. In this page, you can discover 16 synonyms, antonyms, idiomatic expressions, and related words for Olympus, like abode of the gods. Abode of the gods. Watch the next one. Nikon. Hmm. Isn't that a camera name? Hmm. That's the camera name, right? Hmm. Hello, that's the camera name, right? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. No, these, these names are not accidental, okay? Okay, that is on that. That is on that. Um, now get me to Tom, chapter 18, verse 9. Read it. I'm going to show you this Hellenism, polytheistic, animistic, and all that, Olympian, worshipping deities, and all that. Guess what? It's all idolatry, okay? You told me 18, verse 9. Because when we came out of Egypt, these are the things that we were doing. Guess what? When the Greeks took over, they got all the... the they, got, they went to Egypt, and Alexander, guess what he did? He took all the gods of Egypt and brought them to Greece and renamed them. When the Romans took over, the Romans took all the Greek, the, the Greek, the Greek gods and renamed them. America has been the same thing today and more. Okay, read. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9. Read. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. You see that? So the Lord was warning us, listen, when you come into the land which I'm going to give you, that I promised your forefathers, don't learn the customs and ways and abominations of those nations that were in that land. That was the Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Perizzites. Go ahead. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. That's abortion, meaning don't commit abortion because... Guess what? The Canaanites was doing that. America is pushing that today. Okay, read. Or oh, that uses divination. Witchcraft, go ahead. Or an observer of times. So in our case, they'll say, no, but you are going to some Sangoma, you're going to look at the mirror. What the hell is this? I'm a horoscope. Esau's version is horoscope. The black man's version, Israelite version, doing evil is, they say you are going to look at a mirror. Read. Or an enchanter. Or a witch. An enchanter or a witch. Go ahead. Or a charmer. Mm. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. So you see that when he says, or a charmer, that goes into what? That, you know that movie, that series, Charmed and all that, those women that were playing witchcraft. Um, is it, and a consulter with familiar spirits, you know, going to see a media. He said, no, I'm going to see a media. They can read my palm. Okay, all of that nonsense, or a wizard or a necromancer, all that goes back to idolatry. So the Lord says, don't do that. Don't follow the customs of these nations because it's all idolatry. You understand? Isaiah 8 verse 19. Read that. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 19. Read. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, Mm -hmm. And unto wizards that peep. You see that? And to wizards and that, that matter. Peep. The wizards that peep goes back into, you know, those that say they can talk to the day. You understand? The wizards that peep and that matter. You know, Sangomas and all that. They say, no, blow into that sack, that liver. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And that matter. Should not a people seek unto their God? You see that? And that matter. That goes into, um, what do they say? Um, their womb and all of that is they blow into the sack mm -hmm. and then they throw the bones on the floor mm -hmm. we, we've all done this when we're in the uh, wickedness before we came into this thing all praise to the most like for that thing you know we see we've seen black chicken some of us were between with black chicken you understand voodoo mm. you cannot make this up go ahead for the living to the dead you see what the lord is as he says should not a people seek unto their god we must seek unto the living God, you understand, for the living to the dead. Instead of seeking to the living God, we're looking for the day. You understand? The most High God is not the God of the day. Get that, I think it is Mark 12. Hmm. Yeah, Mark 12, 27, read that. 
Mark chapter 12, verse 27. Come on. He is not the God of the dead. Pray. But the God of the living. You see that? The most that God is not the God of the day. You understand? Like our people that are in Egyptology, you are saying the Egyptian book of the day, that's garbage. He is not the God of the day, but the God of the living. Go ahead. He therefore do greatly err. Our people are greatly in error, in great sin. What? Worshipping idols. Okay. Now, give me, go back to First Maccabees. First Maccabees 1. First Maccabees 1. Read verse 43 now. Okay. We're still dealing with the Greek. When it says there's neither Jew nor Greek, we're dealing with the Greek part. What our people was doing in Greek, you understand? And we're calling themselves Greeks. Okay. Read that. First Maccabees 1 verse 43. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 43. Come on. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. So many of the Israelites, many of our forefathers consented to Greek religion. What is that? Democracy and politics. You understand? And Christianity, by the way, today. Read. And sacrificed unto idols. Mm -hmm. And profane the Sabbath. The same idols that we were just reading about. You understand? Under Hellenism polytheistic, animistic, Olympus, and all that. That's what our, our, our forefathers were doing. Okay? So now it says they consented. Let's see the definition of that. The definition of the word consent. It says oh, we consented to that. Watch this. Hmm. Yeah, read that. Consent. Read the definition of consent. The definition of consent. Mm -hmm. Noun. Permission for something to happen or agreement to do something. You see that? So permission. So our forefathers, guess what? They allowed the Greeks to, you know, Antiochus to force them to do this. What is there something to happen? Worshipping of Greek gods. You understand? Greek religion, which is politics and democracy, meaning do whatever the hell you want or agreement to do something. So they agreed. Those of our forefathers that was okay with it, they agreed. Okay. Um, read that. Read that thing right there. What did it say? Authorization. Authorization. They gave Antiochus authorization to do what? For them to follow Greek culture. You understand? A Greek religion, which is what? Politics. Read that. Verb. Give permission for something to happen. Give permission for something to happen. And that's exactly what they did. Our forefathers, they agreed to that thing. Okay, so go back. First Maccabees 1, verse 43. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 43. Mm -hmm. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. So they agreed to this. They agreed. They gave permission, okay, for this thing to take place. Go ahead. And sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. So now, one of the examples of that is that Jason was one of those demons that agreed. Also, when you read Second Maccabees chapter four, go ahead. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah mm -hmm. that they should follow the strange laws of the land. You see that? So when it says that everyone should leave his laws, you see who, 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 who was the who was the target? Us, because he sent letters to Jerusalem and all the cities of Judah, Southern Kingdom, that they should follow the strange laws of the land. What is that? Politics, democracy, you understand? Worshipping of other gods and so forth. And guess what? This was an executive order, a written executive order for us to, uh, to agree to this thing. Those of us that did not agree, we were put to death. Our forefathers that consented, they became Greeks. Okay, go ahead. That they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid burnt offerings. Come on. And sacrifice and drink offerings. Mm. in the temple, and that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days. You see that that's the same thing our people have been today. Because during this time, we're still under the law of animal sacrifice. So, and that's the, the only way we could connect to the Lord is through burnt offerings, sacrifice, and drink offerings. That's how we connected to the Mosaic in the temple. You understand? So we were supposed to... We, those are our forefathers that agreed. Guess what? That means they allowed the Greek to start to enter into the temple to pollute the burnt offering, the drink offering, 
and the sacrifices that we had to perform. Likewise, the same thing today with the Christian pastor. You understand? They welcomed paganism into the into the into the faith. You understand? From the time of um, uh, Constantine, you understand, under the Holy Roman Empire and all that, until this day. Okay, read. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people. They polluted the sanctuary and holy people. Read. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. You see that? He said they set up altars and groves. That's the Christian church today. And chapels of idols, that's the Christian church, and sacrifice swine's flesh, the Christian church, and unclean beasts. They eat in pork, shrimp, lobster, and all that. They say, just pray over it. Watch this. Give me Isaiah 66, verse 17. Let's see what's the judgment for that when the Lord returns. Keep our people on the tent. Okay. Isaiah 66, read verse 17. Watch what Isaiah said here in the spirit of the Lord. Read that. Isaiah. Chapter 66, verse 17. Mm -hmm. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, Some eating like swine's so, flesh. So because the churches back then, the churches back then were set up in gardens. Somebody will just put a stump in his garden and people will come and worship the stump. Okay? So now today, they've got buildings and all that, but they still have the wood under Christianity, the stone under Islam. Read that again, verse 17. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 17. Mm -hmm. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh. You see that? That's the unclean beast that we just read about. Go ahead. And the abomination. The abomination of these unclean beasts that are not lawful, that are not part of the dietary law. Go ahead. And what? And the mouse. That's the raccoons, they eat raccoons and all that. Okay, read. Shall be consumed together, says the Lord. The Lord says they are going to be put to death. How? Jump up to verse 15. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. Read. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with chariots like a whirlwind. Mm -hmm. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So now the Lord, guess what? Nuclear bombs, nuclear war, the lake of fire is going to be created by the nuclear bombs of this nation that are, put, are created. You understand? And guess what? Those that are eating swine's flesh, breaking the dietary law, worshiping idols and all that, they're going to catch this fire. Go ahead. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. You see that? By fire and by sword. Fire, that's the nuclear bombs, the sword. That nation warring and us kids, our forefathers, our people that don't want to repent, they want to be caught in this war. This sword goes into war. Go ahead. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Many, many, many of our people are going to die. Many of our people, they are going to die because they don't want to repent. So go back to First Maccabees 1. Read verse 48 now. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 48. Mm -hmm. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised. You see that? That's another custom that our forefathers that we took during the time of the Greeks. We could not circumcise our children. It was against the Greeks, the laws of the Greeks. Okay, go ahead. And make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. You see that? So they for, they forbade us from, from um, you know, um, circumcising our children. You understand the son? Watch this. Jump down to verse 60. Okay, read verse 60. Watch this. Because when they, they said, listen, those of our forefathers that consented, everything was good. Or so they thought. Because later on, guess what? They also started being put to death. Because during the time of Rome, those that were, you know, supporting Rome, during the siege in 70 AD, guess what? They also got put to death. Even though they consented to the Roman culture and customs and traditions, supporting Rome and going against the, the, the apostles, Christ and the apostles, they also caught hell in 70 AD under Titus and Vespasian. You, you understand? So now, read that, verse 6. First Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 60. Mm -hmm. At which time, according to the commandment, they put to death certain women. They put to death certain of our, our foremothers. Okay, come on. 
that had caused their children to be circumcised. So that means they, they had to know. How would they know that our mothers didn't circumcise their children? Because you had spies among them. The spies would be the ones that say, listen, that one, that family, that family, that family, they are keeping the law. They are, they are, still, they are still celebrating the, the high holidays that God gave. You understand? That's the same thing today. Spies, the Christian church, you understand? And spies among us that say themselves just men. Read again verse 6. First Maccabees chapter 1 verse 60. Mm -hmm. At which time, according to the commandment, they put to death certain women that had caused their children to be circumcised. That caused their children to be circumcised. Watch this, read. And they hanged the infants about their necks. You see what they were doing? So our children that our foremothers circumcised, guess what they did? They were hanging them. Is that they were hanging infants by their necks when they found out they were circumcised on the eighth day, according to the law of Moses in Leviticus 12. You understand? Read. And ruffled their houses. They destroyed their houses. Go ahead. And slew them that had circumcised them. And slew them that had circumcised them. So not only that, not, not only did they kill the infant, but they killed our mothers and fathers too. Okay, come on. Uh, go back. First mark, go back to, jump back up to verse 48. First Maccabees chapter 1 verse 48 mm -hmm. that they should also leave their children uncircumcised you see that and when they our, our foremothers did not our forefathers did not guess what they did they killed the, the infant and they killed the parents too right and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation you remember I remember during when the corona hit in the middle of it they started to say no um, you know, when you circumcise, guess what? You have a high chances of catching corona. That's what they said, actually. They said something like that in the media. You understand? Okay, go ahead. Verse 49. To the end, they might forget the law mm -hmm. and change all the ordinances. You see that? So Antiochus was really targeting our forefathers. He was targeting our forefathers that kept the commandments that he knew that there are some Israelites who are going to rebel against the state. Now jump down to verse 62. Watch this. First Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 62. Mm -hmm. How be it, many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed in themselves not to eat any unclean thing. You see what they did? They made sure, like, listen, it says, many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed in themselves not to eat any unclean thing. So that means that there were those of our forefathers that said, listen, we're going to go to circumcise. Not only that, we're not going to stop. We're not going to all of a sudden start eating unclean food. So what is happening here? That means they had to go to each and every house to figure, to find out if they had circumcised their children. Not only that, what are they eating? And what are they not eating? So there was an inquisition. This was the what? This is the Greek inquisition. You understand? They have to do inquisition to figure these things out. Okay, go ahead. Wherefore, they chose rather to die. You see that? They say, listen, we rather die than to eat pork. Hmm, heavy stuff. Go ahead. That they might not be defiled with meats. That they may not defile themselves with abominable meats that the Greeks were eating. That's why now when you look in the cases, you've got barking uh, root. You go to, um, you know, root, uh, what's the other one? Um, shop right and whatnot. You just find pork in there. Far. There's a lot of pork that they are selling. Why? Because they want to defile us. And our people, they cannot stay away from that demonic, abominable, filthy meat called pork. They can't stay away from it. And that's in the garden. In the suburbs now, guess what? The bourgeoisie Negroes, that's in the made. Guess where they go to eat? They go to ocean baskets. They be eating crab. Shrimp, lobster, calamari, worms, and cockroaches that live under sea. Because those things are just worms of the ocean. That, those are just cockroaches of the ocean. Our people think that's delicate. No, that's garbage. Okay, ready? And that they might not profane the holy covenant. Mm -hmm. So then they die. So then they die. All praises to the most high God. Oh, you understand? Read on verse 64. Watch this. And there was very great wrath upon Israel. 
there was great threat upon our forefathers. Why? Because the Greeks were men. The Greeks were upset. They were angry. That these, these, these Negroes, they are rebellious. You understand? They don't want to renounce their laws. That was during the time of the Spanish Inquisition, they did the same thing. The Portuguese Inquisition, they were doing the same thing. You had inquisitors, you understand? Spies, you understand? Walking around among us. Spies, you know, reporting back to Spain and Portugal. That there's those Israelites, the Moors, as we call ourselves, you know, during that time, that we were not, we did not want to stop keeping God's commandments. Understand that? So you think it's not going to repeat itself again in these last days? Of course it will. And it's going to be worse than it was back then. We must be prepared for this stuff. You understand? Now, watch this. Jump back up. Read verse 48 again. Okay? First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 48. Mm -hmm. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all men of uncleanness and profanation. So now what's happening here is they were they, 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 they were forcing us not they were forcing us not to circumcise. You understand? So that why that we may forget the laws of God. Go ahead, verse 49. Watch this. To the end, they might forget the law. I had that regarding circumcision, uh, observing the high holy days and things like that. They tried, but they didn't succeed. Although many of our forefathers consented to that nonsense. Okay. To the end, they might what? To the end, they might forget the law mm -hmm. and change all the ordinances. And change all the ordinances, meaning the laws that we have. Watch this. Now, I'm going to give an example of that because you had many of our forefathers during the time of the apostles. Guess what? They also were not circumcised. You understand? They grew up under Greek culture and customs and ways. When they had to, when they, when the apostle, when he, when they met the apostle Paul, he had to what? He had to teach them. Some here to circumcise again and, and things of that nature. Let's get some examples. Get the book of Titus, okay? No, no. Get Galatians. Get Galatians 2. Galatians 2, verse 1. Let's read it. Galatians chapter 2, verse 1. Galatians chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. So now the apostle Paul now is going to, he's going to Jerusalem. Remember, before he went back to Jerusalem, it was 14 years later. You understand? So now he's going up there as he because remember he had to go and teach the gospel to the Gentiles, the scattered Israelites in those Greek islands. Okay. He took Barnabas and he took Titus also. Right? And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them. That gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. Because he was given the gospel of the uncircumcision, right? But privately to them which were of reputation, mm -hmm. lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Next verse. Watch this. Go ahead. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek. Being a what? Being a Greek. Being a Greek. So Titus was an Israelite that grew up under Greek customs. That's why it was called a Greek yet, because we were not allowed to call ourselves Jews under the Greeks. Ray. Was compelled to be circumcised. Was compelled to be circumcised. Because what? This is letting you know. When it says there's neither Jew nor Greek, Titus was one of them. You understand? Titus was one of them. Watch this. Give me Titus 1 and 1. Titus chapter 1, verse 1. Titus chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect mm -hmm. and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godly. He says, he says, you see what he says? He says, according to the faith of God's elect. Who is the elect? Israelite. Okay, read. In hope of eternal life. In hope of eternal life. For, the, for God's elect, that's the hope. We're hoping for eternal life by keeping God's commandments. The hope goes into faith. We have faith in the eternal life that the Lord would give us as a reward for keeping his laws in these last days in the lens of our captivity. Go ahead. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. That's some heavy stuff right there. Go ahead. 
but has in due times manifested his word through preaching, mm -hmm. which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Hey, come on. To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith. Mm -hmm. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. You see that? So now, you see what he's writing to our forefather Titus. The one that we read about in the book of Galatians, who he met. You understand? Read. For this cause left I thee in Crete. So now he's saying, listen, because for this cause, Titus, I left you in Crete. Crete is a Greek island, okay? Let's see. Crete. Crete is a Greek island. It says, read that part again. It says, for this cause I did what? For this cause left I thee in Crete. It says, for this cause left I thee in Crete. So he left Titus in Crete. Where is Crete? Let me share my screen. So we see. Let me look at the map of Crete. Okay. So we see what we're talking about here. Now look at that thing. This is the map of Crete. Okay. Crete is in Greece. All right. Look at that. So this is, um, let's just open that one. This is the zoom in version of it. Taking forever. Let's open this one. Maybe it will open. It will be a lot clearer. Okay. This network is just acting up. But anyway, so so can you, brothers and sisters, see this? Yes, sir. Can you see what I'm saying? Can you see my screen? Okay. So yes, sir. This is Crete. Crete is in Greece. Okay. Crete is in Greece. It's a Greek island. Now, the Apostle Paul left Tyrus in Crete, which is Greece. Okay, so now, uh, do you see this map now? Yes, sir. Okay, open. Okay. So read that again, Titus 1. Um, read verse 5 again. Titus chapter 1, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For this course left I thee in Crete. Left I thee in Crete. This is Crete right here. This is Crete. Crete is in Greece. That's the Aegean Sea. That's the Mediterranean Sea. That's the Sea of Crete. Okay. Right. So the Apostle Paul left Titus here on this island. Here. Go ahead. That thou should have set in order the things that are wanting. You see what he's saying? It is set in order the things that are wanting because here in Crete, you had Israelites that also grew up under what? Greek customs. Just like Titus was before he met the Apostle Paul. So now the Apostle Paul is going to be setting him up, you understand, to be able to do what? To teach the people God's laws. So those of, of our forefathers that grew up as Greeks, you understand, under Greek culture and ways, they can return back to the Lord, God's commandments. Okay, read. And ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. You see that? So he was, he was taught by, under the Apostle Paul. And when he was ready, the Apostle Paul said, my blessing, you're going to be in Crete. You're, gonna be, you're, gonna, you're also going to raise up other brothers, other men to do what, you, what, what I have done for you. You understand? Watch this. Now, Titus was not circumcised. He was called a Greek because he grew up under Greek customs and because we were forbidden to do so. Get Acts 16 verse 1 now. Our forefather Timothy. Okay? Acts chapter 16 verse 1. Read that. Acts chapter 16 verse 1. Read. Then came he to Derby and Lystria and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed. But his father was a Greek. But his father was a Greek. Why? Because his father, like Titus, grew up under Greek customs. You understand? But it says his mother was a Jewess and she believed. She kept the commandments. So likewise, guess what? Today... You, we, 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 we wake up as the nation of Israel. We wake up, we remember that we are the Israelites. We must keep God's commandments. You'll find that now, as we are waking up as the Israelites, guess what? Couples will come in. One will, will, will believe that he, he, they are a Jew. The other one will say, yeah, I believe I'm a Jew, but I, I don't want to keep those laws. They want to maintain European culture. Just like what our forefathers were doing back then. You understand? So guess what? Timothy... 
his father was a Greek. So guess what? He also was not circumcised, just like Charles was not. Next verse. Read. Which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. So he had a good report among the brethren that was Lystra and Iconium, which are all these what? These are all Greek islands. Okay, go ahead. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters. For they knew mm -hmm. all that his father was a Greek. You see what they were saying? So the Jews that was in those quarters where the apostle Paul was, where Timothy was, in where Lystra and Iconium, they say, listen, um, he also, they knew that his father was a Greek. So therefore, he wasn't circumcised. Because they knew the history of the Greeks. You, you see that thing? Now watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians. Okay, before you give me Ephesians, get Colossians 1. You know what? Before you get me 1, get Colossians 3 verse 11. Colossians chapter 3 verse 11. Now read Colossians it. chapter 3 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, meaning there's no difference between an Israelite that grew up under Greek customs and an Israelite that grew up in Jerusalem under the laws of Moses. He says there's no difference because why? We are all Israelites. Okay? So guess what? The Church of Colossae was also experiencing the same thing. Go ahead. Circumcision, no uncircumcision. Barbarian, Cynthia. Stop right there. Circumcision, no uncircumcision. We just read this. You understand? Circumcision, no uncircumcision. We just read this thing. Why? Because you had all Israelites like Titus, like Timothy, who was not circumcised. Why? His father was a Greek. Titus was a Greek also. Guess what? It was against the laws of, of the Greek for us to circumcise our children. You see the point? So now you understand why he's saying circumcision, no uncircumcision. You understand? Watch this. Now, let's see where is Colossus. Okay? Let me share my screen once again. So you see where Colossi is. Now, do you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, oh baby. Now, this is these are all these are the seven churches of Asia Minor. That's the Asian Sea. That means Crete is somewhere, I mean Crete is somewhere here. Remember when we're looking at the map. Okay, this is Crete. That's the Asian Sea, right there. The Asian Sea. The agency. So Crete will be somewhere down here. Okay. Now, that's Colossi right there. You see Colossi? It's in Asia Minor. This is Asia Minor. Colossi. Where? In Greece. So who was in Colossi? Get that in Colossians 1 and 1. Colossians 1, verse 1. Read that. Colossians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, mm -hmm. an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And Timothy is our brother. Read. To the saints and to the faithful. To the saints. To the saints. To the saints. So the Colossians are the saints. Okay, go ahead. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. You see that? Which are, in Col which are at Colossae. So now Colossae was a Greek island, not far from the Aegean Sea. Okay, go ahead. And who was scattered there? The saints, the brethren, Paul's brethren. Okay, who's the saints? Get that? Psalms 148 verse 14. Let's see who the saints are. The saints which are at Colossae. Okay. Psalm chapter 148 verse 14. Mm -hmm. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. You see that? So the saints is the Israelites. The saints are the Israelites. Go back. Colossians now, chapter 1, verse 2 again. Colossians chapter 1, verse 2. Mm -hmm. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. So to the Israelites and faithful brethren, to faithful Israelites in Christ, which are at Colossae. Go ahead. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? So now, these Israelites, these, these, the Colossians were Israelites scattered in Colossae. Okay, the Apostle Paul was writing to. 
So go back, Colossians 3, verse 11 again. Colossians chapter 3, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew. Now we understand what that means. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew. Same thing that we read in Galatians. Go ahead. Circumcision, no uncircumcision. Circumcision, no uncircumcision. Whether you were circumcised because why? You grew up in Jerusalem. You were keeping the laws of Moses. Okay. Or uncircumcision, scattered Israelites in those Greek islands where you were not circumcised. Okay, go ahead. Barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free. Barbarian, Scythian, meaning Israelites that were calling themselves barbarians or Scythians that were scattered in Scythia. Okay, go ahead. Bond nor free. Read verse 11 again. Colossians chapter 3, verse 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor mm -hmm. uncircumcision. Come on. Barbarian, Scythian. Bond mm -hmm. no free. Bond no free. Bond no free. Come on. But Christ is all and in all. Christ is all and in all. He's going to tell you who, who, is he referring, who is he referring to in verse 7. Next verse. Watch this. Verse 12. Put on therefore as the elect of God. Put on therefore as the what? Put on therefore as the elect of God. You see what he's telling you? He's telling you the Colossians are at the elect of God. Mm -hmm. The Colossians are at the elect of God. Go ahead. Holy and beloved. Holy and beloved. Beloved of God. Get that in Baruch 3, 36. You see, the elect, mm -hmm. the, the Colossians are the elect of God, holy and beloved. Okay, read that. Baruch 3, verse 36. Baruch chapter 3, verse 36. Mm -hmm. He has found out all the way of knowledge okay. and has given it unto Jacob his servant mm -hmm. and to Israel his beloved. And to Israel his beloved. Okay, so now what I'm showing you is the Apostle Paul is saying the same thing. When he's writing to the church of Colossae, when he's writing to um, the church that was in Galatia, guess what? He was all telling the same things because they were all in the same boat in terms of what? culture, nationality, they were Hellenized. They needed to return back to the laws of God under Christ. Watch this. Go back to Galatians now. Okay? Galatians. No, no. Give me Ephesians 2 verse 7. Watch this. Because it says, circumcision. Go back. Read Colossians 3 verse 11 again. Colossians 3 verse 11. I'm going to just tie the book of Ephesians to this now also. Watch this. Read that. Colossians 3 verse 11. Colossians chapter 3 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, Wait. circumcision nor uncircumcision. Stop right there. Hold that. Give me Ephesians 2 now. Verse 11. Ephesians 2 verse 11. Watch what the Apostle Paul says here. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. Stop right there. You see what he's telling them? Is as yet. Wherefore, remember that ye, who is the ye that in time past, meaning in the past, there were Gentiles in the flesh. Who is the ye that is making reference to Ephesians 1 and 1? Watch this. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1. Come on. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus. You see that? To the saints, to the saints which are at Ephesus. To the Israelites which are at Ephesus, scattered at Ephesus. Go ahead. To the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. So go back to Ephesians 2 verse 11. Now we know who is he making reference to when he says that ye being in time past. Read that. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, Stop right there. Why is he saying Gentiles in the flesh? He's going to tell you. Go ahead. Who are called uncircumcision mm -hmm. by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. You see what he's saying? He says you were called the uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So who was calling the Ephesians uncirc the uncircumcision? The Jews in Jerusalem. That's why there's neither Jew nor Greek. 
The Jews in Jerusalem were calling the Israelites kept us in at Ephesus, as an example, the uncircumcision. You understand? It says in the flesh. Why is he saying in the flesh? Now, watch this. Let me show you something, guys. Let me share my screen once again. Now, look at this map. You see the map? Yes, sir. Okay, so now this is Asia Minor. These are the seven churches of Asia Minor, right? Look at that right there. What is that? What does that say? Ephesus. 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 So guess what? These are, this is in B, okay? Asia Minor. So now watch this. Watch this. Get First Maccabees 1. Go back to First Maccabees 1. Read verse 49. Why does it say um, they were called the uncircumcision in the flesh made by a hand? Let's mark it with 148, 48, yeah, 48. First Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 48. Go ahead. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised. You see that? That they should leave their children uncircumcised. Titus, Timotheus was one of them, as an example. Go ahead. And make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. You see that? Because when you are uncircumcised, you are unclean. You understand? You, physically, when you are uncircumcised, you are unclean. You need to chop the, you know, chop the thing off. Now, go back to Ephesians 2, verse 11 again. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh. You see that? There were Gentiles in the flesh. Because they were forbidden to circumcise, right? By the Greek. Come on. Who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Next verse. Watch this. Go ahead. You know what? Hmm. 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. I think that's what I want. 1 Corinthians. Yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Start of verse 1. Watch this. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Really? Ye know that ye were Gentiles. Stop right there. He says, ye know that ye were. You were Gentiles. He's talking to the church of Corinth now. He says, you know that you were Gentiles. That's the same thing he says to the Ephesians. You understand? It says, wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. This is saying the same thing. He said the, the same thing to the church in Ephesus. He said the same thing to the church in Corinth. The same thing. Read that again, verse 2. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, mm -hmm. even as ye were led. You see that it says, it says the Israelites, they the church of Corinth, they were in the past, you know, they, they, they were Gentiles. Because they were what? They were called Gentiles because they were living among them. They were living among the Gentiles, but who were the Gentiles during this time? The Greeks. Where is Corinth? In Greece. So he's saying the same thing to the church of Corinth. You understand? So go back to Ephesians 2 now. Read verse 12. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12. Mm -hmm. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Now, these are scattered Israelites. He says, We were without Christ. Why? Because they were living like Gentiles, living among Gentiles, living like them, calling themselves Gentiles. Go ahead. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. You see that they were strangers from the covenant of promise. Just like we read in 1 Peter 1 and 1. He says, strangers, you understand? Who were the elect according to the foreknowledge of God before. Read. Having no hope mm. and without God in the world. You say that? Without God in the world. Because what were they following? They were following dumb idols like we read in 1 Corinthians 12 and 2. Read. But now in Christ Jesus, Ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. He says, now, now, because you were sometimes far off, living like Gentiles, not only that, but they were cut off from the commonwealth of Israel, 
because they went into idolatry. He says, but now you are brought nigh by the blood of Christ, because Christ brought all 12 together, all 12 tribes together as one when he died on the cross. You understand? Read on. For he is our peace. He is our peace because there was a split in the nation that only he could bring together. Read. Who has made both one? He made both Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom one nation, which is the whole family that he took us out of Egypt in Amos 3 and 1. Read. And has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Meaning the wall that we had between us. That's why the Samaritan woman had to be, uh, well, that, well, when he, she was talking to Christ, guess what? She had to be brought in. You understand? That's when the Lord says, you were brought nigh. The example is the Samaritan woman. Another example is Cornelius in Acts 10. Same thing. You understand? So, so what I'm showing you, brothers and sisters, is that they are, the Bible is done the same, the same thing, especially the letters of Paul, because our, our people, they stumble in the Christian church by is because they don't read, and guess what? They don't read for comprehension because the blind is leading the blind. You understand? But that's why we hear what the Lord is waking us up this day. Okay? So go back to Galatians now. Galatians 3, read verse 28 again. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Mm -hmm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Now we understand what that means. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Go ahead. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither bond nor free. What does that mean? There is neither bond nor free. Get the book of Acts 22. Acts 22, verse 25. Acts chapter 22, verse 25. Wait. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and mm -hmm. uncondemned? You see what he's asking? Is it, is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a what? To scourge a man that is a Roman. The man that is a Roman. The man that he took about himself. The Roman is talking about Paul. The Apostle Paul is making that sense to himself. Why was he saying this? Because the Apostle Paul had Roman citizenship. You understand? He had Roman citizenship. So he wasn't a bond man. He was a free Paul. Go ahead. When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. You see that for this man is a Roman, okay? Meaning he's got Roman citizenship, right? Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. Mm -hmm. I'm a Roman citizen, right? And the chief captain answered, With a great sum obtained I this freedom. Mm -hmm. And Paul said, But I was freeborn. You see what he's telling him? He says, I was freeborn. I was freeborn. I mean, there's neither born of the apostle Paul had Roman citizenship, unlike our brothers and sisters that did not have Roman citizenship, which was scattered in those islands that the apostle Paul had to go and teach the gospel. So the apostle Paul, he could travel everywhere. He spoke many, multiple languages. You understand why? Because he had Roman citizenship. So that's an example of there's neither born nor free. Okay, go back to Galatians. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Mm -hmm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Wait. There is neither bond nor free. Now we understand what that means. Go ahead. There is neither male nor female. Stop right there. You see this part right here? This one right here is the reason why today in the Christian church, the black woman thinks she's equal to the black man. And she doesn't think she's equal to the white man, which is, you see the bias behind this? She don't think she's equal to the white man, but she thinks she's equal to the black man because of this picture. She doesn't apply the same thought process to the white man or the any other man of the other nations outside of us. You see the witchcraft? Read the thing again, verse 28. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Mm -hmm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Right. There is neither bond nor free. Come on. There is neither male nor female. Mm -hmm. There's neither male nor female. Let's understand that. Give me that in First Peter. Okay, give me First Peter 3. First Peter chapter 3. Let's start at verse, let's start at verse 5. First Peter 3, verse 5. We're going to read down. 
First Peter chapter three, verse five. Come on. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God mm -hmm. adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. You see that it says they were in subjection to their own husbands. Meaning what? They understood the order of the house, God's divine order in the house of the Israelite nation. The man is the head, the woman submits to the man. That's the order. Okay, go ahead. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. Now he's giving some example. Even as our foremother in the past, Sarah obeyed our forefather Abraham. Go ahead. Calling him Lord. Mm -hmm. Calling him my Lord. Read. Whose daughters ye are. Mm -hmm. As long as ye do well. Stop right there. You see that part right there? When it says, our foremother Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Whose daughters you are. You sisters, you are the daughters of Sarah. As long as you do well. As long as you obey your husband and calling him Lord, submit yourself to that man, not thinking whether you are the prize and he's not. Guess what? As long as you do well, you are the daughters of, of Sarah. But as long as you don't do well in terms of submission and your role in the house, guess what? You're not the daughters of Sarah. You are the daughters of Vashti the queen and Jezebel the wife of Ahab. Okay, go ahead. As long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. You are not going to be you're not surprised by what the sisters are saying. Ray. Likewise, ye husbands mm -hmm. dwell with them according to knowledge. He says, ye husbands dwell with the, the sisters, your wives, according to the knowledge of God, according to God's law. Okay, go ahead. Giving honor unto the wife mm -hmm. as unto the weaker vessel. How do you do that? Giving honor unto the wife? You give honor unto the wife. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 14. Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Okay, 1 Corinthians 14. Read verse, verse 35. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 35. Mm -hmm. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. You see that if the women, they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home because their husband's job is to do what? teach your wife God's laws. So when it says giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, you teach her God's commandment. Guess what? She must ask the question. That's what it says. If you want to learn anything, ask your husband at home. You understand? That's why it says giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. How? You teach her God's commandments. Okay? Read for it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Okay, let's go back. First Peter 3, 8 verse 7 again. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Wait. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, mm -hmm. giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Watch this. Here you go. And as being heirs together as of being the what? grace and as being heirs together. As being heirs together, 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 together. That's why what we read in Galatians, go back to Galatians now. Galatians 3 verse 28 again. Galatians chapter 3 verse 28. Mm -hmm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Right. There is neither bond nor free. Come on. There is neither male nor female. There is neither male nor female because you are heirs together. He's not saying the men and the women are equal. No. He says you are heirs together. Okay. Heirs together. Go back to 1 Peter 3, verse 7 again. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, being heirs together to the grace of the grace of life. What is he talking about? He's talking about the promise of our forefather Abraham. That the woman will also get the promise of our forefather Abraham. You understand? Just like the man. But he's not saying men and women are going to be equal because he's explaining it from the verses above when he's explaining women must be in subjection to their own husband. It says being heirs together because both of you, you're going to what? You, you receive the promise that was given to our forefather Abraham. Okay, go ahead. 
that your prayers be not hindered. And guess what? He's going to he's gonna explain it. Go back to Galatians 3. Read verse 28 again and read down. Watch this. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Mm -hmm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Right. There is neither born nor free. Uh -huh. There is neither male nor female. There is neither male nor female because they are, we are heirs together to the grace of life. Go ahead. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. What is he teaching? He's teaching unity of the 12 tribes of Israel under Christ, under the new covenant. Right? And if ye be Christ. If ye be Christ, meaning you under Christ now. Go ahead. Then are ye Abraham's seed. You see that? Then you are Abraham's seed. Who's Abraham's seed that the Lord has chosen and given his promise to? Get that in Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8. Mm -hmm. For thou, Israel, art my servant. Mm -hmm. Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. You see that the seed of Abraham, according to promise, is the 12 tribe. Go back. Galatians 3, verse 29 again. Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. Mm -hmm. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. Ray. And as according to the promise. You see that? And as, and as, and as according to the promise. What promise? Jump up to verse 19. Galatians chapter 3, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Wherefore then, serveth the law, it was added because of transgressions. The law is going into the law of animal sacrifice. Wherefore then, serveth the law of animal sacrifice. It was added because of transgression. Go ahead. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. That seed is talking about the seed of who? Christ, the Messiah. That will come to our forefather Abraham. To him the promise was made. Right? And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. You see that thing? It was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Who's that talking about? That goes into what? If you remember, the old covenant was the mediator was who? Moses. The new covenant, the mediator is who now? Christ. Jump up to verse 16. Verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed where the promise is made. You see that? To Abraham and his seed where the promise is made. The seed goes into Christ, but it also goes into the 12 tribes of Israel. Right? He saith not, mm -hmm. and to seeds as of many. Come on. But as of one, mm -hmm. and to thy seed, which is Christ. You see that? The seed as of many, because what? Christ comes from what? The tribe of Judah. Okay? He says, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So now, he says, we should be heirs together. So go back down to verse 29. Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. Mm -hmm. And if ye be Christ... Then are ye Abraham's seed. You see that? Then we are Abraham's seed. Because what is he making up? He says, if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. So this seed goes into the 12 tribes, but it also goes into Christ. Because Christ will come out of the tribe of Judah, which is the son of Jacob. Go ahead. Then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And heirs according to the promise that was made to our forefather Abraham. Okay, so that's what this chapter is going into. He's going into the unity of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Is when he says Greek, no Jew, it's Greek. He's not talking about white people. He's talking about Israelites scattered in those Greek islands and cities. Okay, give me that in Ephesians 4, verse 3. The Apostle Paul was teaching unity of the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, read that. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Read endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. You see that? Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. That's one thing that um, as a nation we're struggling with. Why? Because our people, they unite under Christianity, politics and all that, but not the Bible. The Bible is one, the only book that will unite the black man and the black woman together. The 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Get that in Sarah 25 and 1. Ecclesiasticus 
chapter 25, verse 1. Mm. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. Mm. The unity of brethren. The what? The unity of brethren. What's that word? The unity of brethren. Unity. Unity. Unity of brethren. Come on. Whether you grew up under the Greek, under, 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 under Greek culture, calling yourself a Greek, or you are, a, you are a Jew, grew up in Jerusalem under the law of Moses, but he says you must come together. Unity of the brethren. Go ahead. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors. Okay, we. A man and a wife that agree together. Neither male nor female. The, it says what? A man and a wife that agree together according to what? God's divine order. What is the Lord teaching? Was teaching unity of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That's why it says we are all one in Christ Jesus. Meaning what? Unity of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That's what the Apostle Paul is explaining, and that's what we're supposed to push this day. Get that in Zephaniah 2 and 1. I'm almost done. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Read. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, or nation not desired. Read again. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, or nation not desired. That's the command right there. That's what the Apostle Paul was pushing. And that was we pushing today. Our people must return back to who they are. Their true nationality according to the most High God. That's what's going to bring the 12 tribes together as one. Not politics. Not religion. Not way going. You understand? Not joining the Christian church. None of that will bring the 12 tribes together as one. We must return back to our nationality as the Israelites. Then we begin to be connected to this book. And know what is required of us before the Lord returns. Go ahead. Before the decree bring forth. Before the decree bring forth. What decree? Get that in Psalms. Okay. Get Psalms chapter 2. Before the decree bring forth. Psalms chapter 2 verse 7. Watch this. No, no, start at verse 6. Psalms chapter 2 verse 6. Mm -hmm. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Who's that king? Christ. Go ahead. I will declare the decree. I will do what? I will declare the decree. The decree, that's the promise. I will declare this decree. You know, when I set up my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Read. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. Mm -hmm. This day have I begotten thee. So this decree is the promise. You understand? The promise that was given to our forefather Abraham. So go back to Zephaniah 2 verse 2 now. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 2. Mm -hmm. Before the decree bring forth. Before the decree bring forth. Before this promise is established. Guess what? He says we must gather ourselves together in verse 1. Before the decree bring forth. Where the most High God will set up his king upon the holy hill of Zion. He says we must gather ourselves together. Before the what? Before the decree bring forth. Mm -hmm. Before the day pass as the chaff. Before the day of the Lord pass as the chaff. Come on. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Before the Lord comes back on this earth and bring forth judgment and vengeance on earth. Read. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. He says, before all of this take place, he says, we must gather ourselves together. And when we gather ourselves together, we gather ourselves together under God's commandment, God's law. So watch this. Give me that in Malachi 4. Okay. Malachi chapter 4. Read verse 4. Malachi chapter 4 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Read. Which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. You see that? He says we must remember the law of Moses which he commanded unto us in Horeb. Read. Watch this. Come on. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet mm -hmm. before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Before the decree bring forth. That's the same thing that Zephaniah says. 
Before the decree bring forth, he says, he will send us Elijah the prophet. What would Elijah do? Come on. And he shall turn the heart of their fathers to the children. Yes, he will turn the heart of the fathers to the children. The fathers is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Joshua, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Those are the fathers. The heart of the fathers is this Bible. So before that decree bring forth, yes, Elijah would come and he will what? He will turn the heart of the fathers to the children. So we know what we must do. We, to do what? To gather ourselves together. Because where a nation does not desire. Read. And the heart of the children to their fathers. You see, now our hearts are returning back to our fathers as we repenting. And guess what? Renouncing the Hebrews and the doctrines and the philosophies of these nations that we have learned in the land of our captivity. Read. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Before the day of the Lord pass as the child. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon us. Guess what? We must remember the, the, what? the law of Moses and do it. That's what he's saying right there. That's what he's saying right there. Okay, I'm going to end the class right there. Oh, please, to the most high God, let's break bread. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. All right. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. These do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. These do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread, and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. All praises. All praises. Thank you.